Your Story Mortgage, powered by MortgageAdvisors.com. NMLS 701-681-93-7321. Equal housing lender. Coach Todd Golden here. We all know Gator fans are a rare breed. The way you show up on game day is the way you show up in life. All out. So when it comes to pet fanatics like you, there's only one place who goes all out for your pet the way you do, and that's Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. It's a one-stop shop for all your pet care needs. Boarding, grooming, day camp, and veterinary services all in one place. Whatever your pet needs, they'll make them feel completely at home. Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. Finally, complete pet health care is here for Gator Nation. This is Florida Basketball from Learfield. What makes a champion? Dedication, resilience, preparation, and belief. In the summer of 2024, our U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes will compete in Paris for gold medals and their part in history. But Team USA won't get there alone. At UF Health, we know what it takes to be a champion and to care for champions. We do it every day for them and for you. UF Health is a proud national medical center for Team USA. The same great care they get, you get. Always. Hey, it's the Goodrick Spiro, and I'm proud to be the official mover of the Florida Gators football team. The Gators have a winning tradition, and they choose Good Greek to get them there. And when it's time for you to move, move like a Florida Gator and call Good Greek Moving and Storage. Whether it's local or long distance, Good Greek can do it all. And we'll save you time and money by lighting your load with our junk removal service. So go to goodgreek.com for Good Greek Moving and Storage, official movers of Florida Gators football. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Exclusive pregame conversation with Gator head coach Todd Golden is presented by the International Diamond Center, where Gators get engaged. Well, coach, the road to the Final Four starts here for the Florida Gators. Congratulations on a great season. You're in this field of now 64. How do you feel here on the brink of your first dance with the Gators? We're, uh, we're thrilled. We're happy to be here. Obviously, this is a, a goal of our program every year to play in this tournament. Uh, and to get here in year two, I think, is, is a great sign for what we're doing and, and what we have uh, to accomplish here in the future. And, um, you know, Colorado, really tough opponent. You know, a 7-10 game to see a team that I believe is a top 25 team uh, is going to be a huge challenge. They're playing really well as of late. They've gotten healthy. And, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough game for us here today. We're going to have to be ourselves and uh, be able to just absorb the moment and do the best we can to stay in it. And uh, if we can do that, we'll be in good shape. What is the moment, Coach? What is that challenge? It's The challenge is to, to stay consistent with what you do, knowing that you're playing in the biggest event in college sports. Uh, you know, there's going to be a big crowd out there. First time for a lot of our guys to play in the NCAA tournament, so it's going to be a new experience for them. And, uh, you know, like we were talking about before, I expect some interesting things to happen in the first four minutes of the game, uh, whether it's jitters or nerves. But, you know, as we get into the, the meat of the first half, I expect us to calm down and, and play a really solid game. Coach, this event is not new to you, nor is this building. This is where you were with San Francisco before you came to us in Gainesville. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, obviously we had a great game, lost in overtime. Uh, a similar experience for us losing our starting center right before the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's a trend I'd like to, to stop at this moment and never let happen again. But uh, no, it's great to be back. Obviously uh, thrilled to be here in orange and blue this time and uh, really proud of the strides our program's made. And, and hopefully we come back here again soon. You mentioned Micah Hanlockton's injury. It'll be the first time you've had to have a different starting five in about 25 games, Coach. Alex Condon will make his first career start in the NCAA tournament, but yet I feel like I've been watching him play almost starters minutes for the last month. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, kid. Yeah. Uh, time to step up. And uh, no, it, obviously a big blow losing Micah. He's been a huge part of our success and a huge part of our team all year. Uh, but I'm thrilled that he's been able to be here with us in Indianapolis. I feel like he's given us a lift this week. And, uh, you know, just his positive spirit and mentality is, has been great for his teammates. And uh, I think the guys will rally around him. And for, for Kondo, uh, you know, like we talk about all the time, this, this guy's uh, ready for the moment. You know, I'm not sure he's going to play great, but I know he's going to be ready to go, and uh, he's not going to be afraid. And that's something that uh, for this team is really important going into this game. Coach, rightfully so, you gave respect to your opponent today, Colorado, and the season that they've had. Are they comparable to the SEC foes that you faced over the last two months? You know what? They're built a little different. Uh, they're bigger. They're longer than most teams in our league, but they're not as fast uh, or quick twitch in the half court. 
uh, but they grind you out. And, and as we've talked about, you know, I think this is going to be a little bit of a battle of tempo. You know, our, our goal is to get this thing up and down and uh, try to score in the 90s today. And I think their goal will be to try to slow us down and make us operate in the half court. And uh, like we talk about a lot, if, if we can uh, hold our identity and make sure we're playing that style of game, that will definitely benefit us. Uh, if we do operate in the half court, we can still win the game, but it's just not the type of game we want to play today. Whether I'm in an old mindset or not, but they always talk about guard play in this tournament. Coach, you've got two great guards. How can they really push you guys forward through the weekend? Well, I wouldn't trade them for anybody. You know, I think ZP and Walt specifically, the, the, that tandem uh, is, is as good as anybody in this event. And uh, they've been doing it for us all year, whether it was at home or on the road or in the SEC tournament. Uh, they've played big in big moments. So I expect those guys, especially ZP being a senior leader, and Walt, who's one of our two guys that have played in the NCAA tournament before, uh, to not you know get overwhelmed by this opportunity in this moment. And I think they'll play really, really well today. Coach, what's the last thing you'll say to the Gators before they take the floor today? Just be ready to compete, man. Let it all hang out. Don't worry about... Uh, don't be afraid to fail. You know, go out there and have fun and make sure you're competing at a high level and uh, make sure you cover up for your teammates. Coach, as always, thanks. Good luck. Go Gators. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Hey, Coach Todd Golden here with us. Starting lineups here for Game 1 of the tournament for the Gators and, of course, the Colorado Buffaloes after these messages on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles reminds you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's like driving around twice the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. To win while driving, you must focus. Put it down and focus on driving to arrive alive. Looking for the perfect match? Oh yeah, look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Lease a new 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for $329 a month for 36 months. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Well-qualified lessees with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3628 to its signing. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. This is Gators Basketball from Learfield. Hey Gator fans, it's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! Walk-ons is always a win. Whether it's for a post-game celebration, drinks with the crew, or an easy weeknight dinner, we got it covered. Scratch-made dishes, wall-to-wall -wall TVs, craft beers and cocktails. Dig into our mouth-watering menu items like po'boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp. Plus, fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. Find your nearest location or order online or in the app. Walk-on Sports Bistro for the win. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Gators Sports Network. This is Gators head coach Todd Golden. And I'd like to thank these major partners for making it possible to bring you this radio broadcast to Florida basketball. UF Health, Wells Fargo, Pet Paradise, and Pepsi. Now, let's join the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. Okay, let's dance. Florida, Colorado here. The 7-10 matchup in the South Regional. The Gators make their return to the tournament here for the first time since 2019. And the Gators in opening round play 16-5 all time. Eight straight opening round wins for the Florida Gators. They'll do so today with no Gator have, having been in this position before. Only two players have tournament experience. That'd be Walter Clayton at Iona, Tyree Samuel at Seton Hall. Todd Golden counts as well at the University of San Francisco. Everyone else is in orange and blue at the tournament for the first time. So as we get set for this one and done situation, we're going to go, win or go home, Lee Humphrey. A big Lee's Keys today. I think it's critical that we set the pace in this game 
play up tempo, try to get to the 90 point mark, play in the high 80s like we have all season. Colorado played four conference games, got to the championship and lost just like we did, but they played in the Wednesday play in and had to travel after that game. So I want to see them try to run with us to do that. We're going to have to get stops, though. Colorado is very efficient on the offensive end, nearly 50% from two, about 40% from, th from three, and 77% from the free throw line. So we can't let them get easy shots, can't let them play in their offense where they're comfortable because then we won't be able to get out in transition and run. Also, they're very good on the glass, plus six in conference play. We're going to have to rebound, clean up misses so we can get out on the break. All right, we'll track those as we go along. Start might be key here. Lee, in the games that we've watched, whether it be on television or here in person in Indianapolis, there's that feeling out process. Maybe some shots don't go in. It can be kind of clunky at the start. Can you survive the first, let's say, four minutes up until that media timeout? You and I talked to Todd Golden about that very thing. His answer was, look, I'm okay if we're getting the right shots. What did he mean by that? If you're taking shots that we've taken all year within the flow of the offense, guys are not playing out of character, then he's going to be happy and say, hey, just you know, keep the gas down, keep pressing, it's going to start to fall. All right, first ever meeting between Florida and Colorado in men's basketball. Let's get you the starting lineups. As always, they're presented by Walk-On Sports Bistro. Walk-On's more than a restaurant. We'll start with the 10th-seeded Colorado Buffaloes out of the Pac-12 Conference, a record of 25-10. and 10. They went 13-7 and 7 in Pac-12 play, went into their conference tournament as the third seed in that conference. Tad Boyle's their head coach. His overall head coaching record, 353 wins, 248 losses at Colorado. It's in his 14th season. He has a record of 297 wins, 182 losses. Here is the starting five for Colorado. It starts with K.J. Simpson. He's really the guy that makes them go. Second in the Pac-12 in scoring. First in assist to turnover ratio, 2.2 per ball game. Simpson is a 6'2 junior from West Hills, California, out of Chaminade High School. Javon Hadley, 6'6 senior out of St. Paul, Minnesota, averages 11.6 points per ball game. Luke O'Brien's a 6'8 senior. He's a hybrid guard slash small forward out of Littleton, Colorado and Columbine High School. He'll make his 18th start here today. Also a senior at 6'9 out of Germany, Tristan Da Silva. He's a four-year guy for the Buffaloes. 20 points in his last game. He's averaging 15.9 points per ball game. Not a bad three-point shooter for the wing. 38%, 58 of 100. 52. And then down low in the five position, Eddie Lampkin Jr., 6'11". They list him at 265. How about like 280? That might be more accurate. He is a load out of Houston, Texas, Morton Ranch High School. Last three games, 9.7 points per ball game on 13 of 19 shooting. He has a team high 159 rebounds. He finished fifth in the Pac-12 in total rebounds for the season. Lampkin, a transfer from TCU. Lampkin, De Silva, O'Brien, Hadley, and K.J. Simpson for Colorado. Meanwhile, for the seventh-seeded Florida Gators out of the Southeastern Conference, an overall record of 24-11 and 11 under second-year head coach Todd Golden. And for the first time in 24 games, a different starting five here by one position. Micah Hanlockton done now for the year after the a compound fracture suffered last Sunday. He is here with the team. But with that, Alex Condon will make his first career start. He becomes the first Gator ever to make their first career start in the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Condon, 6'11", the freshman out of Perth, Australia. In his last two games, 7.5 points per game, 8 rebounds per game. He led all SEC freshmen in total blocks with 43. His pivot made is Tyree Samuel, the 6'10 senior out of Montreal. He was dynamite in the SEC tournament, 13.4 points per ball game on 53% shooting. He led the SEC this year in field goal percentage. Will Richard on the wing at 6'4", the junior out of Fairburn, Georgia. He's 10 of his last 24 from three-point range. Today he makes his 95th career start during his time at Belmont and at Florida. And then the all-SEC backcourt, Zion Pullen, the 6'4 senior out of Pleasant Hill, California at the point. Walter Clayton Jr., the 6'2 junior out of Lake Wales, Florida at the two. Those two combined have 33 points per ball game over their last four. Those will be the four played in Nashville at the SEC tournament. Pullen, Clayton, Richard, Samuel, Alex Condon, again making his first career start here this afternoon. Steve Egan is our producer and engineer on site. He is courtside. This is old hat to him. He's glad to be back in the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Our officiating crew today, the crew chief is Bert Smith. 
Also on the whistle, Eric Curry and Owen Short. We know Owen Short from SEC play. They have an alternate here as well as they do in the postseason at this level and in the NBA. That'll be James Hicks. He's on standby in case one of these three officials on the floor currently is unable to finish the game today. Home whites for the Gators. Blue letters and numbers. Florida across the chest. The blue and orange striped on each side of the jersey and shorts. They wear the lighter color as the lower seed. Colorado wears black jersey, black shorts, old gold letters. Colorado across the chest with the white number. Finally, we're ready to dance. Let's tip it up, Sean. Can't wait to watch. De Silva and Condon will jump for it. Interesting that Condon, his first career start, will make his first career opening tip moment here on that March Madness logo on the floor here inside Gainsbridge, Gainbridge Fieldhouse here in Indianapolis. All set to play. Ball in the air, and the Gators have won the opening tap. Let the madness begin, and the Gators will shoot at the end to our left toward the Colorado bench here in the first half. Quick pass to Clayton on the left wing. Looking for Samuel. He'll lob it, and Samuel will catch well off the left side of the lane. They dig down, throw back out to Clayton. He fumbled it. Now drives, going to the bucket, lays it up, and in. Scores with the left hand. That's how this one starts. Looks like they're going to double Tyrese on the post touch, so we're going to have some kick-out opportunities. So now Colorado on the offensive end. And Simpson going for a layup. Missed it too strong off the glass. Rebounded by the Gators. Samuel up the floor to Clayton. Clayton has a clean run of the lane. Goes to the rim. He left it off the back iron. No good. Took a little pop. No foul. Simpson sends it left wing to Silver for three. Ripped it. And an early lead for Colorado at 3-2. to two. Silva at 6-9 can shoot the three ball. He went north of 20 points nine times this season. Richard, angle left. Works toward the elbow, spins off a con and screen, rises. Foul line jumper's good. Mid-range jumper for Will Richard. 4-3 Florida. Like the start, it's got some pace. I like the shots going in, too. I was a little worried he'd be a little dry to start, you know what I mean? New building, new new challenge, all of it. Simpson around the high screen from Lampkin. A little snap pass up top and a swing to the right side for De Silva. One dribble, feeds the top, driving down the right slot, pivoting. O'Brien feeds inside. Lampkin's left hook, or right hook off the catch is good. Lampkin just caught that ball right underneath the rim. We got to do a better job pushing him out. Condon's about half his size with three ball. Clayton good off the left wing. This looks good to start. 7-5 Florida. O'Brien put his hand up like, my bad. You can tell he forgot who he was guarding. Yeah. He's got to push up on Walter. You know, Walter, as it ended up, led the SEC in three-point percentage. Ball slapped loose. Simpson saves it. Feeds a rolling Lampkin inside. Pops one. Shoots. Missed it right to the rim. And it's cleared by Tyree Samuel. We'll give it to Clayton, who brings it up the center of the floor. Fumbled the dribble. I'm just flat lost it. Stolen by O'Brien. He'll wait wing right for teammates. It's a diving Lampkin. Wrestled down the lane and whacked on the arm by Samuel. First foul of the game is on Tyree Samuel. Tyrese has got to be more disciplined there. That was just ticky-tack foul that he had. He gave up. I mean, it's the right call, but he should never put his hands down there going for the ball when Lampkin is driving to the basket. Keep the hands high. KJ Simpson out of West Hills, California. Their point guard will trigger the inbound baseline right. Looks underneath, nothing there. Lobs it out to De Silva above the right foul line extended. Turns over the top of the key. Freezes, wraps a pass around the defender to the top of the floor. Hadley step back for two. No good. Rebounded by Pollock. Colorado's two for five out of the game. Up to the right wing. Richard, transition three. Ripped it. And the Gators out of the gate here with a hot four for five start, including a pair of threes. And we're playing with the same confidence we did throughout conference tournament play. 10-5, Gators. Coming up at the 17-20 mark. Chest pass to O'Brien on the near side off the angle. Drives to the left hand. Goes the rack, laid it in, and was fouled by Walter Clayton. I didn't see that coming from Luke O'Brien. Seas parted. O'Brien had the entire paint to drive, and that's Walter and Zion on a pick and roll. They didn't communicate well. It was a little bit of a ghost screen that turned into a brush. Probably just needs to be a switch. I think so. Yeah, because De Silva, who set the screen, really didn't move after the screen. No roll, no pop, no nothing. Right. It's guard to guard, two guards guarding each other, or two our, our guards involved in the play. Just switch it. Free throw good. It makes it 10-8 Florida. Gators at the end to our left with Clay are pulling on the dribble. Chest pass to Richard. Another angle right three. Oh, he's hot from that spot. Another three ball down for Will Richard. He's one of the X factors for this team. 13-8. When Richard's going from the perimeter, the Gators are extra special. 
Simpson between the circles, left of the Lampkin screen. They'll double on the wing briefly. Here comes the trailing to Silva, feeds the rolling Lampkin who catches and lays it in. I like that action. Colorado, they run their stuff, and they're yeah. executing. They're getting whatever they want. We've got to pick it up on the defensive end. 13-10, Florida. Poland takes a handoff, drives underneath the foul line, puts his back to the goal, flips it out to Condon, top of the arc, goes high low to Samuel, catching a lane is good, pass to Silva. Has anyone missed a shot yet, Sean? <laughs> well, Florida's what, six of seven? They're four of seven. So, sort of, to answer your question. Doesn't feel like. Hadley with the face mask on to protect that once broken bone on that nose there, nasal area. Gives it off to De Silva. And in the Simpson, top of the arc, puts his head down, drives on Samuel, let him go, and a layup is good. They got the matchup they won at the top. They got it. We got we to play some defense. Four minutes in, three-point lead for Florida. Florida only leads by three despite hitting all but one shot. That's the disturbing part. Another high-low opportunity here. Caught by Kahn and block left. Bump, bump, turns right, hooked. Missed it, back iron. Rebound Samuel. One dribble, off strong, missed it. Rebound Samuel and sticks it in. Second chance bucket makes it 17-12. Now a stop, partner. That's right. Let's get a stop. Hauk waiting to check in for Florida. Next dead ball. Samuel fronting Lampkin at the foul line extended to flex an entry pass out of bounds. That'll take us to the first media timeout. A sub will be in on each side when we come back. 15-27 to go. Hot start here, really for both teams, but the Gators lead by five off some really good shooting. I love what I see on the offensive end. We look confident. We're letting it fly. We're knocking down everything right now, but the ball is moving. 15-27 on the game clock here in the first half. It's Florida 17, Colorado 12. This is the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. Today's broadcast is brought to you by eBay Motors. Burn rubber, not cash, by shopping on eBay Motors. eBayMotors.com. This is the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. What makes a champion? Dedication, resilience, preparation, and belief. In the summer of 2024, our U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes will compete in Paris for gold medals and their part in history. But Team USA won't get there alone. At UF Health, we know what it takes to be a champion and to care for champions. We do it every day for them and for you. UF Health is a proud national medical center for Team USA. The same great care they get, you get. Always. Today we have two very special guests on our program Introducing Lemon hey. and Lime Hello For Starry Lemon Lime Soda Thanks for having us What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor And it's caffeine free Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other Who is it? We're both important So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda No, that doesn't sound right Oh, I like it So you saying hip-hop could be hop hip Works for me Starry Lemon Lime Soda Starry hits different This broadcast of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the NCAA through Westwood One. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the NCAA and Westwood One is strictly prohibited. With Lee Humphrey, Steve Egan, Sean Kelly here courtside in Indy, the Gators lead it 17 to 12 with 15 27 to go in the first half brought pace for about 80 points in the half shot i mean the offense has been extraordinary that huge shot clock above each bucket right now you take it down we take don't it need down. it the rate we're going might as well be a 10 second shot clock I don't, I don't think we've had a possession maybe one where we had the lob from post to post into tyree samuel that went over 10 seconds both teams are going to go with about an eight-man rotation here, Lee. So even though the Gators will be without Micah Hanlock, then it's pretty much the same 
Colorado short in their rotation going to the Pac-12 tournament. Thomas Hawks in for his first run of the night. He replaces Tyree Samuel. Simpson and the Buffaloes have it to start. Out of the timeout. Pass it to Silva, top of the arc. Dribble handoff to Hadley. It'll quickly flip it to Williams. He's the new man on the floor for Colorado, a freshman. Back out to Simpson between the rings. Rises for three off the dribble. Side iron no good. Right in the hands of Zion Poland. Poland will bring it up. Goes around a moving stream by Condon. Wiggles to the right baseline. Jump pass caught by Condon, top of the arc. Everybody will clear out. He'll move down the left side of the lane. Puts his back to the defender. Turns into the left hook. Missed it. Just over the rim. Clear by the buffs. Up to Hadley. Transition three. Back iron. No. Nope. Tap rebound. Condon to himself. <laughs> he had two teammates who couldn't catch it, so he jumped in and secured it all by himself. No offensive rebounds yet for Colorado. Doing a nice job on the defensive glass. Pulling around the high middle screen. Draws a foul. A little forearm thrown out there by K.J. Simpson. He picks up his first. Then got Dak checks in for Colorado, a 6'11 freshman out of Lincoln, Nebraska, originally from Senegal. So they do have some length, and, that, and Todd Golden mentioned that in our visit with him earlier today. Outside of point guard, they're 6'6 six, six and up. The starting five. Mullen gives a Richard top of the arc. Drives the foul line, throws wing left. Out for three. Good, good, good. He was all for his last 12 from downtown. And the Gators open up an eight point lead here at the 14 14 mark. Here's Cody Williams. He gives it up to Simpson. Top of the arc. Got it by Clayton. Chest pass. De Silva coming his way. Turns, goes down the left side of the lane. Layup deflected by Howe. Loose ball, through Condon ahead to pull it. Sends it away right for Richard. Oh, he tried to back it out to Clayton. It's stolen by De Silva, who was trailing the play. Down for the rim. Tack with an alley-oop dunk. The rim is bent. It's bent down. It's probably just going to take one of these guys to pop it back into place. It's a breakaway rim, and it's going to take even more. There Now it's too high. The, rim, the front of the rim is higher than the back of the rim now. Good defense, Alex. <laughs> well, that's the end that Colorado's going to shoot to, so I don't really care. <laughs> that turnover hurts, though. We had all the momentum. Thomas made an incredible block on De Silva's drive to the basket. We had a fast break turnover. Riley Kugel's in for the first time for Florida. He did not play in the last two games. Mullen looking for Kugel. Catches left of the lane. Throws one into the pocket. It's fumbled. Saved by Hout. New Aberdeen, who's also in for the first time. Seven to shoot, over to Aberdeen, looks at the shot clock. Dribbles toward the top of the arc, draws Dak defensively. Crossover dribble, pump shoots, elbow right, rim no, rebounded by Simpson for Colorado. Shovel pass ahead, that goes off Samuel and out of bounds. It should be Buffalo's ball. And it's going to be Florida ball. And it's right where we're sitting, and I'm giving no indication as it went off of Samuel. It's a good job. Good, good thing you stopped talking because the official was working his I way know. down towards us. I, know. I may have not done anything right, but I didn't do anything wrong there. Is that fair? Right. That was definitely a missed call right there. Good to Aberdeen angle left. Gators get a break here. Can they now get their first bucket off of a Colorado turnover? Out of a double, Samuel throws to Aberdeen. Two-foot jump stop down the lane. Runs it up and in. Front iron, back iron, and down. And Aberdeen, who's been really good here the last two weeks, has his first bucket. Denzel driving it out of the post kick out. I like the play. 22-14, to 14, Gators. 12.43 to go first half. Dak comes out, catches top of the arc, hands it off to Simpson. Screen and roll. Ball knocked loose by Denzel. Outlet pass to Kugel. Foot race to the air end. Two-hand dunk for Riley Kugel. And the Gators lead it 24-14. to 14. First double-digit lead on either side. Exactly how we want to play, Sean. This pace is incredible. Here's the freshman, Williams, now. Dribbling in the left front court. Williams drifting to his right, pulls Hauk on a switch, pass back behind O'Brien, and it back to Williams, trying to get the left side of the top of the arc, spins to the free throw line, stumbles down the lane, push shot, back iron, no good, rebound, goes out of bounds. Into the Gators bench, off Colorado. And you know who's leading the cheering section right now behind the Gators bench? Former Gators quarterback Anthony Richardson, who's the Colts' starting quarterback now, and he is some kind of amped up in his orange and blue T-shirt. 
standing up, up with those fists, Sean. His former teammates are all gathered in Gainesville. How shoots for three straight away. Missed that one. Good luck, though. Florida leads by 10. Billy Napier and the Gators football team have gathered as a team for a watch party inside the Heavener Center, and so they're watching collectively today. And the baby hook there by Dak makes it 24 to 16. Florida leads Colorado. And an off angle right to Kugel. Kugel goes left of a house screen to the top of the key. Push it to his right to Poland. Steps in the arc now, back outside the arc. Nearly to the Colorado bench. Drives to the foul line. Turn, shoots, and rimmed out. Tap up toward the rim by Hawk, no good. And then picked up off the floor by O'Brien for Colorado. O'Brien to the top of the arc. Pauses, gets a cutting to Silva, catch and lays it in past Zion Poland. Pretty strong cut. Paint was completely empty, yeah. all kinds of space. Under 11 minutes to go in the half. Google, bounce pass to Sam the right of the lane. Flip it back to Riley on the right sideline. Left hand dribble one time, throws a leading pass under the rim. Samuel caught it on the opposite side. He tried to throw it up and left it short. Out of the iron. Eight is six for Florida and a hand check. A reach in actually against Denzel Aberdeen on a driving Tristan De Silva. We have another foul on Florida. And will take us to a media timeout. The under 12 has arrived here in the first half. The Gators have led by 10, up by 6 now. 10.38 on the game clock. Florida 24, Colorado 18. This is the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Gator fans, college basketball is back. So grab a cold, refreshing Dos Equis lager and make the most of the big game with your real ones. Whether you're at the bar with fellow Gators or watching with your friend who went to that other school, Dos Equis is there for it all. So buy a cold, crisp Dos Equis and raise one with a real one on game day. Dos Equis, proud sponsor of the Florida Gators. Enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. Copyright 2023. Imported by Cervezas Mexicanas, White Plains, New York. Just the Gators, they're your Gators. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today and show your Gator pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Gators. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official retail bank of the Florida Gators. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, NA member FDIC. Gator Nation, this season it's time to act for the greener good. UF and GFL are making great strides to reduce our footprint, and you can help. Recyclable and compostable paper products, cups, straws, and food waste receptacles are available at the stadium. Look for the signs and put it in the right can, greener Gator fan. Think green as you cheer on the orange and blue. Call GFL at 1-800-535-9533 or visit us at gflenv.com. GFL, green for life. This is the NCAA Tournament. Now back to Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Here's the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. Well, the Gators are shooting 53% here in the first half. Four of five from three-point range. Have yet to go to the free throw line and are winning the rebounding battle 10-6. As a result, what was once a 10-point lead, still not bad for the Gators. Up six with 10.38 to go in the first half. Florida leads Colorado 24 to 18. We're at the under 12 media timeout. That usually means that Lee Humphrey heads over to the Gators bench as a listen in on Todd Golden and what the Gators are discussing. He'll emerge here momentarily and give us his inside the huddle report brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Lee, you look ready. Coach Golden loves what he sees on the offensive end, but he's talking to his guys first about the defensive end, saying we've got to do a better job matching up in transition. It's taken us too long to find our man. We're playing from behind, and we're leaving easy driving lanes for Colorado to get to the hoop. So talk early, match up on the offensive end, saying keep playing side to side. We're executing great. We're running in transition, making the right decisions, keep the ball moving side to side. We'll keep getting open. Then also talked about Simpson, point guard, want to keep him left, saying hey, he's less, much less effective if we can keep him to his weak hand. All right, Lee, thank you very much. Florida's missed their last four shots, but again, leads by six. Both teams are shooting 53%. Really, the difference right now is the three-point shot. Colorado has one to Florida's four. A lot of what you just heard from Lee Humphrey's report. 
is backed up by the numbers. Colorado ball out of the timeout off an Aberdeen foul. Hand off to Simpson from the elbow, throws wing left. Adley with a little shimmy shake, drives across the paint, left to right, spins, feeds Lampkin on the left low post. He fumbled it and now is in a trap. Goes behind his back under the rim. Hadley shoots. Got fouled. No call. Ball got knocked loose. Kugel to the other end. Crossover dribble. And fouled as he's bumped in the lane before he got into the act of shooting, apparently. It looked like he was in the gather. Nonetheless, it'll be Gators basketball on the baseline. And the foul here on the freshman, Cody Williams. Two fouls now on Colorado here in the half. Aber remains in and will trigger the baseline inbound. Lobs it to Samuel on the right wing. Headed off to Walter Clayton. Headband on. Picks it up after one dribble. Feeds Samuel right high post. Pass fake. Goes out of a double to Abertine on the far wing. Refeed the post. Samuel on the catch. Turn. Throws left wing for Clayton. For three off one bounce. No good. Rebound on the weak side by O'Brien for Colorado. O'Brien top of the arc. Fumble to drive down the right side of the lane. Somehow punched it out to Simpson. Swing it to Hadley, left to the top of the yard. He'll throw it underneath in the dunker spot. O'Brien catches, spins, turns into a right hook. It's good, but a foul on Lampkin will be charged to Colorado. They're going to count the bucket, I think. It's all the official give the count the bucket sign. Yeah. So. I think we were just late communicating on that back screen for O'Brien. Walter ran right into the screen. I think Alex has got to call that screen out louder. And Lampkin just hammered Alex. Yeah. I mean, his his head and neck whiplashed from the hit to the back by Lampkin. The ball was on the rim when the hit occurred. So you have to let the play finish. They count the bucket. And now Colorado's pulled within four. 24-20. Clayton on the dribble here, left elbow. Sends it through Samuel, a swing to the right wing for Aberdeen. He'll turn, drive to the left low post, spin, shoots, that rims out. Tip follow in by Tyree Samuel. Second chance points, 4 0 Florida. And Tyree's doing a nice job on the glass. Three for five from the field, five rebounds already. 26 20 Gators. Hadley on the right foul line extended. Jabs up with the right foot, flips it out up top. Here's Ruffin in for his first run. I've known him since he was a kid. Ruffin chest pass to the left. More on that in a moment. Sends a wing left. Hadley drives in the paint. And got a blocking foul induced on Tyree Samuel. Missed the shot. A runner with the right hand. He'll go to the free throw line. And now we have to start talking about foul trouble a little bit. Already short a big. The Gators cannot really afford any of their bigs to get into foul trouble. It's two on Tyree Samuel. Tyree's tried to avoid the contact too. And... Hadley did a nice job going into Tyree's body, forcing the foul call. I mentioned Javon Ruffin is in. His dad is Michael Ruffin, former NBA player and assistant coach. He was on the New Orleans Pelican staff when I worked in New Orleans. And so I've known Javon since he was, well, he was never knee high. I think he probably came out of the womb at knee high. But Ruffin, a guard now for Colorado, a redshirt freshman. He is one of seven children for Michael and his wife. Hadley at the free throw line, knocks down both. So 8.59 to go, first half, it's 26-22 Gators. Colorado withstanding our offensive run a bit. They're as advertised offensively. Like you said, they know what they're doing, they're efficient. Clayton squares, shoots for three straight away, no good. Rebound eludes Houck. Cody Williams has for Colorado, up the right wing to Ruffin. Ruffin chest pass to Lampkin at the top of the arc. Going it back to Ruffin, a little pump fake. Drives down the left slot, walled off by Condon. Sends it out up top to Williams. He'll drive it down the same side of the lane. Scoop, shot, no good. Another foul on Florida. It's on Hauk. Two more free throws for Colorado. Colorado has been effective driving through the basket. And just getting some advantages on some screening action, ball reversals. And whenever they have an angle to the rim, they're going right to it. 14-12 advantage in the paint right now for Colorado. These will be free throws four and five. The foul on Hauk is his first, but the team's fifth. Free throw good for Cody Williams. This is a good free throw shooting team, Lee Humphrey. About 79% on the season. That's like 11th in the country. Can't put them on the line. They're efficient all the way around. They don't, they're not overly aggressive either. They only force nine turnovers per game yeah. in conference play. They're 2-3 against ranked teams this year. 
They scored 90 or more points nine times, won all those occurrences during the season. Going a pretty good pace here early in this one. 26-24, Gators 10-point lead down to two. Kugel gives to Condon. Straight away, pump fake from three. Looked back door, couldn't get to Clayton. Hands it off to Richard. Richard step back three up top. Back iron no good. Rebound on a block out by Javon Hadley. Hadley sends it to Ruffin who will lob it into Lampkin. Lampkin mid post, left side of the lane. Pump, pump. Dribbles hard to the rim. Shoots point blank. Missed it. Rebounds off his shoulder and grabbed by Houck who came to help Condon. Great outlet pass up the floor to Kugel. Kugel attacks the rim and lays it up and in. He went just kind of up and under the defender at the last second. Couple transition baskets for Riley. He's given us a spark off the bench. 28-24 Florida, 7.40 to go first half. Winner gets Marquette on Sunday. Pass to the right wing, caught by Cody Williams. Looks inside, can't get it to Lampkin. They'll send it around to the left wing. O'Brien drives, sends it in. And on a bounce pass, Lampkin catches and scores quickly on the right side of the rim. You can see Coach Golden saying, force him left, force him left. We get beat middle. Clayton attacks the rim, and a layup is good. He came slicing through the right wing. Back to what you were saying about the side you want this Colorado team to go to on the defensive end here. Rough it. Had to knock loose at half court by Kugel. Richard to the loose ball. Lob for the rim. Oh, they got too fancy. It's out of bounds off the hands of Riley Kugel. It was a bad feed from Richard. Could have had a bucket off the steal there. Richard just missed on his feed to the rim for Kugel. Out of bounds. Colorado basketball when we come back. Gators lead by four. So far, so good. So far, so good. Let's tighten it up on the defensive end a bit. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. Again, Florida 30, Colorado 26. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles reminds you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's like driving around twice the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. To win while driving, you must focus. Put it down and focus on driving to arrive alive. This is the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Walk-ons is always a win. Whether it's for a post-game celebration, drinks with the crew, or an easy weeknight dinner, we got it covered. Scratch made dishes, wall-to-wall TVs, craft beers and cocktails. Dig into our mouth-watering menu items like po' boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp. Plus, fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. Find your nearest location or order online or in the app. Walk on Sports Bistro for the win. Coach Todd Golden here. We all know Gator fans are a rare breed. The way you show up on game day is the way you show up in life. All out. So when it comes to pet fanatics like you, there's only one place who goes all out for your pet the way you do, and that's Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. It's a one-stop shop for all your pet care needs. Boarding, grooming, day camp, and veterinary services all in one place. Whatever your pet needs, they'll make them feel completely at home. Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. Finally, complete pet health care is here for Gator Nation. Toyota is a proud partner of Gators basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Seventh seed at Florida leads 10th seed Colorado 30 to 26. And it has been an offensive show tonight. Both teams shooting 50% or better. We're 10 for 19 from the field, 53%. Hit a three. Colorado 13 for 26, 50%. So as well as we played on the offensive end, we'd love to have a bigger lead than four points, but got to be happy with that lead. Got to figure out how to slow up Colorado down on the defensive end, though, because they're just, they execute, they run what they run, and they know what they're looking for, and we're not taking out of their offense right now at all. No, and they right now have some balanced scoring. Four of their five starters have scored. In fact, now all five of their starters have scored. Plus three more off the bench. 
No one has more than six. That'd be Lampkin, the big center. The Gators are led by Will Richard, who has eight on three of four shooting, including a pair of threes. Walter Clayton has seven. Zion Pullen has yet to score. Tyree Samuels off to a good start. He has six and five rebounds, but has been on the bench a little bit with some foul trouble here in the first half. So on the floor, defensively now for the Gators, Pullen, Clayton, Hout, Richard, and Condon. Ruffin off the right wing, feeds Hadley at the top of the key, sends it to Simpson, wing left three, good. Don't let them get going now. Their last three games, 9 of 47 from three-point, but during the regular season, they were seventh in the nation in three-point percentage. So they can heat it up. We just don't want it to happen today. Clayton takes the handoff, turns the corner, flips the wing left, pulling for three, never left the floor, and it's rims off. His toes were planted the entire shot. Rebounded by Colorado. They can take a lead here. Rough it. Pull up. Mid post. Short mid range jumper. No good. Rebound Condon. Gators lead is one. Up the floor to Pullen on the left wing. Kicks it up left side of the lane. Backs it out to Clayton. Clayton guarded by Simpson. He'll lead Condon to the left side of the lane for a catch. Alex trying to work his way back into that lighter stained wood. Flips it out to Con or Clayton. Swing, swing to Pullen. Wing right. Step back three off one dribble. Bang! Got it. First points for Zion Pullen on the day. And the Gators lead it 33 to 29. Alex just kept waiting for the double team. As soon as the double team came, he popped it out. Swing, swing, three. Pullen now has over 600 points on the season. Hadley spins block right. Lost the handle. And then was grabbed by Richard and pulled to the ground. That was a funky play there right in front of the baseline official. That note on Poland, by the way, came into the game with 499 points. I'm bigger part, 500 points on the season. Clayton already has over 600. Tyree Samuel is on his way to 500. They'd be the first Florida trio to all net 500 points in the season. Think about all the history for the Gators. And a blocking foul on Poland, trying to slow up Simpson after the inbound. 17 foul on Florida comes at 5.32 to go in the first half. Not many fouls called this half. 5.32 in conference tournament. We get to 1-1 one one with 14 minutes to play. Yes. Colorado's only fouled three times. Colorado's out shooting Florida now 52% to 50%. Yet Florida leads by four. 1-1. One one. Simpson's first free throw is good. What do you think of K.J. Simpson, your first look at him in person? He's solid. You know, he actually reminds me quite a bit of Zion just with his numbers. They're pretty similar, and he's super steady. Shoots the three ball a bit more than Zion does, but uh, he's, he's a nice point guard. He just set their school record for minutes played last weekend. He's over 1,230 minutes on the year. He doesn't come out. He hits both the free throws. Condon now top of the arc offensively for Florida. Hands to Clayton, squares, fires. Missed a three off back iron. Tip out rebound. Condon finds Richard. Reset to Clayton. And Condon goes down at the end of the play. The official has blown the play dead. And Condon is reaching for his left ankle. Condon saying, oh, I, think, I think I'm okay. He just said to Tommy Houck. Big deep breath. Not only for Condon, but for Gator Nation. Yep, he inverted his left ankle just a little bit. I think he came down to the side of Lampkin's foot, landing after tapping that rebound out. Fortunate to see Alex coming up. He definitely looked like he tweaked his ankle right there coming yeah. down on Lampkin's foot. So can't afford to lose Alex right now. One thing we learned about this freshman from Australia, he grew up playing water polo and Australian rules football. He is a tough dude. That's High good. pain threshold. Whiplash from Lampkin about really? 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Slammed him underneath the basket. So Condon's able to continue. We'll see if it stiffens up on him. Gators will inbound front court left. Clayton just gets it into Condon. Back to Clayton who's driving toward the left baseline. Throws low but caught by Hauk at the top of the arc. Trying to lead Richard back door and Richard stopped cutting. The ball goes out of bounds. The Gators end up turning this ball over with now 5.07 to go in the first half. Gators lead at 33-31. We just we hit a bit of a lull here offensively. We've got to get some stops so we can keep running in transition. Meanwhile, Colorado remains red hot, 11 of 21, and they're doing it like this. Going to the rim, catch inside. Hadley missed it point blank. Condon's got the rebound for the Gators. Under 4.50 to go in the half. Condon, chest pass to Richard, catches, turns, top side of the lane. Lobs to Condon, kind of an awkward feed, caught in a double team wing left. Tied
tied up. We're going to get a held ball. The arrow belongs to Colorado. And Todd Golden, yeah, he's going to get Samuel right in now here at the 442 mark. And Riley Kugel's also going to enter. So the two freshman bigs, Condon and Hauk, will exit here. We're going to play four guards. Yep. For the first time since probably South Carolina played 1 3 1 against us. That means Will Richard likely now will work as a four on the offensive end. You remember he did that after Castleton went down last year. He was the quote unquote power forward. Lampkin catches top of the key. Samuel's got to work on him. Throw back door intercepted by Kugel right in front of the rim. Riley in the open floor. Peels off wing left. Guarded by Ruffin on the near wing. Riley back and forth to the right hand. Spins, block left, shoots. Foul! Oh, he just missed the shot. It sat on the front iron for a second, wouldn't drop in. Foul on Javon Ruffin will put Riley Kugel at the line to shoot, too. It's going to be fun to watch this lineup, Sean. We're going to have a ton of speed out there, and you can see Riley playing one on one. Great drive into the post, and on the defensive end, we mentioned Richard playing the four. He's guarding De Silva. De Silva's 6'9", has a huge advantage, but he doesn't really play inside. He's playing on the perimeter. 33-31, Florida. And Riley Kugel at the line. Now, he didn't play in the last two games, but partner when Kugel last did play, boy, he was big at the free throw line. If you remember, he won 6-for-6 six six to help seal a win in Nashville. First free throw good. 34-31. Second free throw makes it 35-31. Six big points this half. Poland will pick up Simpson just inside half court on the March Madness logo. Chest pass caught by Hadley wing right. They're trying to feed Lampkin here. Skip pass over the top. Leaping catch. Corner left for Simpson. Hits a diving Williams. Back to the right wing. Hadley catch and shoot three is down. 42% three-point shooter. Hadley Pulls Colorado back within one, 35-34. Samuel, top of the arc, goes back door. Intended for Richard, tip caught opposite side of the river. Richard threw an uphill and right in the hands of Lampkin. Turn it over. Outlet pass to Williams. Williams hits a Lampkin halfway down the lane. Spins pass. Kugel lays it up and in. And Colorado has a one-point lead, 36-35. Our first lead change of the game. No, beg your pardon, fifth lead change of the game. Google on the left wing. Gators led by 10 at one point in this half. Drives to the left wing. Shoots, missed it wide left of the rim. Rebound Colorado. Buffaloes up the floor with Simpson handling. Feed the right low post just off it. Javon Hadley. Two dribbles with the left hand. Back to the goal. Throws out to De Silva. Guarded by Richard. Plays pick and roll with Hadley. Feeds Hadley block right. Looking inside, ball deflected off the leg of Poland. Ahead for Samuel, two on two. Tyrese lost, he got it back. It's Kugel, attacks the rim, lays it up and in. Twisting to the iron. Riley Kugel has eight and a half. Allen pass to Tyrese to start the break. <laughs> I think my heart skipped the beat there. 37-36. Pass it to Silver Wing right. Lob into the low post. Lampkin out of a double. Hits a slashing Hanley, catches, bumped, and laid it in. And one possibility for Colorado. Takes us to a timeout. So the Buffaloes now back on top with 2.30 to go in the first half. Both teams will huddle up here in Indy. The Buffaloes 38, the Gators 37. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gators Sports Network from Learfield. Just the Gators, they're your Gators. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today and show your Gator pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Gators. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official retail bank of the Florida Gators. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, NA member FDIC. What makes a champion? Dedication, resilience, preparation, and belief. 
In the summer of 2024, our U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes will compete in Paris for gold medals and their part in history. But Team USA won't get there alone. At UF Health, we know what it takes to be a champion and to care for champions. We do it every day for them and for you. UF Health is a proud national medical center for Team USA. The same great care they get, you get always. Today we have two very special guests on our program Introducing Lemon hey. and Lime Hello For Starry Lemon Lime Soda Thanks for having us What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor And it's caffeine free Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other Who is it? We're both important So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda No, that doesn't sound right Oh, I like it So you saying hip-hop could be hop hip Works for me Starry Lemon Lime Soda Starry hits different this is the NCAA Tournament. Now back to Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Here's the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. Hey, Gator fans, for pet fanatics like you, there's only one place that goes all out for your pet the way you do. Morning, grooming, day camp, and veterinary services all in one convenient location. Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. Finally, complete pet health care is here for Gator Nation. Very crucial two minutes and 30 seconds in front of us here in the first half. Florida now trails Colorado 38-37. You should know this. Colorado this year when leading at halftime, 22-2. A lot of their games decided at the halfway point. They're 2-7 and seven when trailing at the break. Hey, look, the Gators also maybe a little more versatile with regard to the score at halftime. 5-4 and four when trailing at the half, 19-6. and six win leading. Bottom line is this. So far, you don't have a defensive answer for Colorado who is shooting 56%, including 7 for 7 at the free throw line. Colorado, they know what they want to run on the offensive end. They do a lot of screening action to get post touches. They pass well out of the post touches. They do a lot of back screening for their guards, and we've really had no answer. I think, you know, playing shorthanded without Micah, Tyrese does have to worry about foul trouble. He's been less physical down low. And we've got to figure out a way to be more disruptive. It's a high-scoring affair. Guards will love this if you're listening. Gators have 12 assists already on 15 made field goals. Colorado has 14 assists on 14 made field goals. It's been Amazing. an offensive clinic. Yes. So Hadley at the line to our right. This is for the uh, three-point play. Neither side has missed a free throw yet. Colorado's eight for eight. Florida, two for two. And with that, Colorado leads by two, 39-37. So down the stretch we go here in the first half. Pullen working with Condon up top. Behind the back dribble, Pullen to the foul line. Freezes, shoots on a fade, missed it, but got tapped. It's a foul. And Florida going to the free throw line for just the second time of the half. Colorado not letting Zion get to the screen, pushing him away from the screen hard. And he did a nice job kind of waiting and probing until Lamp can drop back to the basket so he can drive one-on-one -on -one against Simpson. Foul charge to Tristan De Silva, the senior out of Germany. Speaks five languages. German, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and English. I don't know what language he was just discussing these with the official there. But I can translate. He said that was not a foul. <laughs> he got hit on the elbow. I think it was a foul. Poland's first free throw is good. De Silva's father was a pro boxer in his native country of Brazil. Oh, and there's the first missed free throw of the game. Did everything but go in. 39-38, Colorado. 2-10 to go in the half. Now they tried to turn the corner. Picks it up top of the key. Flips it out to De Silva. Short chest pass to his left. Simpson on the bounce now. Right hand dribble. Then a shovel pass to Williams. Drives it to his left. Feeds the left foul line extended. Hadley now lobbing to the low post. Caught there by De Silva. Twisting, shooting, and got it. Just off the block. And Colorado now with 146 to go up by three. Aberdeen chest pass to Condon straight away. Looks off a man, works downhill. Left side of the lane, turns into a right hook. Got the members bounce. That goes in. It looked a little strong, but Condon scores the bucket. Lampkin just sagging back off and punted in the paint. He saw all the space, and he took it. First points for Condon here in his first career start. 44-40. Colorado leading ball the end of our right. Simpson off the pin down, comes out to catch to the top of the arc. Flips top of the key for Lampkin. Sliding downhill, a pass for Simpson, intercepted by Howe. Outlet pass to Aberdeen, chest pass to Pollock, drives by De Silva, climbs Williams, layup, no, foul on the play. Going short, the SEC official 
Whistles the foul and sends Zion Poland back to the line. Foul against the freshman Cody Williams out of Gilbert, Arizona. I think they are going to call that foul for a while. It's a very um, patient whistle. 16th appearance in the dance here for Colorado. Their first like the Gators since 2021. Colorado's 12 and 17 all time in tournament games. They do have two Final Fours. Neither Lee or I were alive, 1942 and 1955. In fact, in 1955, they went there and lost to San Francisco. You know the head coach was at San Francisco in 55, don't you? Bill Russell. Russell, Russell, coach player. Coach player, yes. So the Gators retake the lead on a pair of made free throws. And as they get the ball to half court, Tad Boyle, their head coach, calls for a timeout. We'll keep it right here. Florida leads it now, 42-41. to 41. After surrendering a 10-point lead, they've climbed back in front here with a minute two left in the half. The quality of basketball this half it has been incredible, Sean, on the offensive end. We've just got to figure out defensively how to slow Colorado down. They're getting whatever they want, getting the ball wherever they want. We're not taking them out of their offense at all. So, I don't know, maybe Coach will change up the defense coming out of this timeout, perhaps. Colorado using the use it or lose it timeout to draw up a play here, I'm sure. And so we'll have a chance to also talk about defense and draw up something on the offensive end. Colorado, no surprise to you, I'm sure, winning the paint 22-18. to and on the flip side, the Gators, 9-5 advantage in the fast break. So they're they're making good on the opportunities where they've won the rebound battle thus far. And each team has turned the other over six times. Really, it's been a very entertaining game. It's been a great game to watch. When we have gotten stops and rebounds, we've run. And we went on a flurry there when we built our 10-point lead where we were out in transition. And we were knocking down a lot of threes, too, during that stretch. Alex Condon gets his first bucket here late in the half, but here in his first career start has four rebounds and an assist. Tweaked his ankle a little bit in the second half of this first half, but no ill effects shown since then. And of course the Gators playing an eight-man rotation here this afternoon. Same goes for Colorado. And of course Colorado just has more depth than their low post. So I think you were right. I think we saw it Tyree Samuel may be be a little tentative, worried about foul trouble. He picked up the two quick ones early. Um, but at some, at some point, I think as a coaching staff, don't you, you've got to kind of gamble a little bit and ride with it and just hope that he doesn't pick up a third here before the break. I think so. And it looks like Tyrese may be out for this last okay. minute. But if he can go into the half with two fouls, he can come out in the second half, play a little bit more physical, see hopefully that takes a while to pick up that third. Gators have five three-pointers so far in the first half. Colorado's three for five. They average about 6.8 three-pointers made per game. So they're about where they are here. I just, I'm, I'm starting to wonder a little bit where the crack will be. What's that crack, Lee Humphrey, where you see an advantage? And, and part of me leans toward Riley Kugel, who has eight points in this half. He, he and Will Richard kind of are the wild cards right now for the Gators. Colorado does have six turnovers, a few more than they probably want. Um, they're right kind of on their average, but it's not a it's not a terrible showing on the defensive end. And Riley's been a part of that. When he's been in the game, he's been able to get his hands on some balls, be disruptive with his length and athletic ability. So you may be right. Put out Riley in there and say, take a little bit of risk on the defensive end. Make sure you guard the ball. But if you've got a chance to get out in the passing lane, do it. Eight points in nine minutes for Kugel. He does come on the floor for Florida out of the timeout. He'll be with Hauk, Condon, Aberdeen, and Zion Pullen. A minute two left in the first half, and Colorado inbound here, timeline left side. So the end to our right, our end, frankly, where our broadcast position here in Indy is across from the Gators bench and just above the free throw line. Coming up, Steve Egan, courtside, halftime host. Here from first round action in Indianapolis. It's been a busy city. NBA All-Star game here last month, the Combine, and then now, of course, rounds one and two of March Madness. Into Simpson, just off the edge of the center jump circle, guarded closely by Aberdeen, who's trying to get him to go left. Simpson moves to his right a touch, picks up his dribble, finds the Silva, flaring across the top of the key. Crossover, drives on Hauk, spins halfway down the lane, shoots a right hook and scores. It's a vet move by the senior. Great first step to get by Thomas. 35 seconds remaining. 43-42 Colorado. Pullen to the left side of the lane. 
Bounce off the mid post to Hawk, top of the key, drive and kick to Zell in the corner for three. Good! Aberdeen in front of the Colorado bench, drops it in. Shot clock is dark, 20 seconds remaining in the half. Gators lead by two. Simpson trying to flop a bit for a foul off a high screen. Aberdeen stays with him. He fought over the screen set by De Silva. Simpson to the center jump circle. Here comes De Silva to screen again. Hauk switches on to Simpson. Simpson step back for two at the free throw line. Got it in. And that's how the half comes to an end. A rebound for Kugel as the red light comes on. All tied here in Indianapolis. The last bucket for Florida, a corner three by Aberdeen. The last bucket, Simpson for Colorado. Very near the buzzer. Colorado this year, one and one when tied at halftime. Gators 0 and one this season when tied at halftime. Very entertaining first half. 45-45 the score here in Indianapolis. Both teams shot really well. Both at about 51%. Gators 51.5%. Colorado 50.7%. Six threes to the half for the Gators. Three for Colorado. The points of the paint, though, for Colorado. And a decisive edge of the free throw line. And the reason why they've matched the Gators' three-point attack. Eight for Riley Kugel. Same for Will Richard in the first half. Seven for Walter Clayton Jr. Six each for Poland and Tyree Samuel. Over to Lee Humphrey. Ready to go with Coach Todd Golden. Todd, you go into the half tide. Very efficient on the offensive end. What would you like? Uh, I just think we're playing well. Uh, offensively, playing for each other. 13 assists is really good. Banging some shots. Doing a good job knocking our free throws down. A few too many turnovers. Uh, you know, with six, a couple of them were unforced. So it wasn't perfect, but uh, pretty dang good on that end. And what do you want to see defensively in the second half? Well, Colorado also efficient. Just got to defend a little bit better without fouling. You know, they made all eight of their free throws. Didn't, doing a good job guarding the line. They only had three made threes. I think they're putting in some tough twos. Just got to provide a little more resistance around the rim here in the second half. And you went with the four-guard lineup for the first time since South Carolina. Do you think you'll do that again second half? Yeah, we'll have a rotation of it for sure. We got to keep Tommy, uh, Kondo, and Reese well-rested. Reese obviously picked up two. We got into halftime with nobody in super severe foul trouble. So, uh, you know, mission accomplished that way. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Coach Lee, thank you very much. Colorado led by K.J. Simpson and by Tristan Da Silva. Each of them had nine points in the first half. Gators make three of their last three looks. Buffalo six for their last six. High-scoring affair so far in Indianapolis. At the break, 45-45. Florida and Colorado. Coming up next, Steve Egan, courtside, hosting us at halftime here inside the NCAA tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Gator fans. It's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! What makes a champion? Dedication, resilience, preparation, and belief. In the summer of 2024, our U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes will compete in Paris for gold medals and their part in history. But Team USA won't get there alone. At UF Health, we know what it takes to be a champion and to care for champions. We do it every day for them and for you. UF Health is a proud national medical center for Team USA. The same great care they get, you get always. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. 
Toyota. Let's go places. Get 2.99% APR for 36 months on a new 2024 Toyota RAV4. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Zero down for well-qualified buyers with approved credit and financing through Southeast Toyota Finance. 2908 monthly payment for every $1,000 finance. Excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fee. See dealer for details. This is the Starry Halftime Report. Starry, charge your game with Starry. Official soft drink of Florida Gators basketball. The Starry Halftime Report begins now. Halftime in Indianapolis. Gamebridge Fieldhouse is where we are. It's the Gators 45 in Colorado. 45, game one of the NCAA Tournament. Steve Egan, Lee Humphrey here courtside. Lee, a very entertaining first half, very clean first half, I thought, overall. It was a, what a half to watch offensively. Both teams, incredible. Colorado shooting 60% from the field. We shot 52%. Super clean game. Yeah, it was uh, not a lot of fouls. Uh, and uh, when when people went to the line, they made their shots. So I think there's only one miss between the two teams. That was high-level basketball in the first half. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's nice. We got the, the game really got into a flow because there wasn't a lot of fouling. We didn't put Colorado into the bonus until about five minutes and a half, and we never got into the bonus ourselves. Alex Condon starting for the first time in his Gator career in place of uh, Micah Hanlockton, but I thought he had a, a really good first half. I thought he did, too. He did a nice job managing Colorado, sending double teams into the post. He had a couple good kickouts out of it. Um, he did a nice job on the glass. We're re winning the rebounding battle. That was big. Colorado came into the game plus six in rebounding during their conference play. Riley Kugel, who hadn't played in the last two games for the Gators, a, a pretty good first half. He leaves the team, actually, at the half with eight points. So you can see Riley, he brings a different dimension to our team with his speed in the open court. He was able to get out in transition, force a couple uh, transition situations where he had layups and he made things happen on the defensive end, so I expect Coach to play him quite a bit the second half. What did you think of the four-guard lineup uh, late in the half? It was it was nice to see uh, us kind of throw a change-up out there, not as deep in the post. We're going to have to do it again. You heard Coach at halftime say he would go back to it, and I thought it was successful. Do you think the Gators were being a little conservative in that first half? I think on the defensive end, we can be more physical, more aggressive, and we may see it in the second half. I think our guys had Micah's injury in the back of their mind, just seemed a little soft around the rim. All right, and again at the half, the Gators and Buffaloes tied at 45. Lee and I have more in just a moment on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Coach Todd Golden here. We all know Gator fans are a rare breed. The way you show up on game day is the way you show up in life. All out. So when it comes to pet fanatics like you, there's only one place who goes all out for your pet the way you do, and that's Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. It's a one-stop shop for all your pet care needs. Boarding, grooming, day camp, and veterinary services all in one place. Whatever your pet needs, they'll make them feel completely at home. Pet Paradise and New Day Veterinary Care. Finally, complete pet health care is here for Gator Nation. Hi, I'm Test Director Rick from ServPro, the leader in cleaning, restoration, and construction. It's my job to make sure our pros are prepared for anything. Storm damage? Fixed. Flood damage? We're on it. Fire damage? Not anymore. Aliens? What? Aliens? We cleaned those sites a while ago. No matter the disaster, our pros will make it like it never even happened. Find out why ServPro is the number one choice for residential and commercial restoration projects, large and small. Visit ServPro.com today. This is Florida basketball from Learfield. When you live in SEC country, you feel it everywhere you go. The traditions and rivalries surround you. As much as you celebrate the game, Regions celebrates your financial wins even more. And like SEC fans, we'll never quit. Because in an SEC world, we're the SEC bank. Regents, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. Hey, it's Sean Kelly. Our Gators don't compromise on the court, and Gator fans don't have to compromise when it comes to diamonds, engagement rings, and fine jewelry. You always get more at International Diamond Center. IDC is Florida's leading jeweler, recognized statewide for excellence in every category. Selection, value, and trust. That's why IDC has been named official jeweler of the Florida Gators again this year. Get details and showroom locations at shopidc.com. International Diamond Center, where Gators Nation shops for jewelry. Steve 
Ian Lee Humphrey here courtside halftime in Indianapolis as the Gators and Colorado Buffaloes are tied at uh, 45. Uh, Lee, the Gators at one point had a 10-point lead, and now it's tied here at the half. How do the Gators regain the, uh, the lead, put this team away, and move on to the next round? Got to figure out how to be mis more disruptive on the defensive end. I'd like to see us play more physical down low. Colorado winning points in the paint 24 to 18, and we've just been too soft giving up drives to the rim and also deep post touches for Lampkin. Yeah, how do you stop him, Lee? I think you got to hit him early. We I, we didn't we weren't that physical with him down low. I think Tyrese Alex, whoever's guarding him, is going to have to try to get a body on him before he gets his cut started and is at the basket. And as far as um, the De Silva, he was the other I thought X factor in that first uh, first half. De Silva has a ton of length on the perimeter. He's six nine and he's really smooth out there. He got Colorado started with the three. I think their first field goal was a De Silva three right in front of our bench. He had a couple of nice drives to the basket and. Also, we got to keep him out of the paint. I mean, there's a lot of guys from Colorado driving, getting to the ribs. What do you expect the Gators to do here in the second half offensively? I think offensively, we probably try to do the, the same. We'd get out in transition off of any defensive stop, rebound, and even off of makes we were pushing. So try to score early. Did a nice job, I thought, getting the ball into the post and then passing out of the post. And uh, also, too, Coach, he talks about in the huddle, side to side, getting the ball swinging, making Colorado get into some rotations. Then you can make the pay in the pick and roll. What do you think of the Gators from beyond the arc so far? Six of 12. I'll uh, take it. That, that they were playing pretty well. Let's do it. 12 for 24 for the game. <laughs> we win. You, you would hope so, right? And again, at the half, the Gators and Buffaloes are tied at uh, 45. Mike Mode has a look at everything else going on in this busy day in college basketball as we continue in just a moment on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. The head ball coach scores again. Steve Spurrier's head beer coach, 1966 American Lager, is now available everywhere at Exact Tech Arena. Smooth and refreshing with just enough of a crisp finish. Also available at most places you buy beer. If you don't see it, ask for it. A beer made by Gators for Gators. Make a great play and enjoy a cold one today. Steve Spurrier's head beer coach, 1966 American Lager. Please drink responsibly. Hey Gator fans, it's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! They say good things come to those who wait. But with delivery or curbside pickup from Publix, powered by Instacart, now they come without the wait. In as little as an hour, you could have the good stuff like key lime pie and chocolate chip cookies come right to your door. Get started at Publix.com slash shop because you can never have too much of a good thing. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Item prices vary from item prices and physical store locations. Fees, tips, and taxes may apply. Subject to terms and availability. Today we have two very special guests on our program introducing Lemon hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. It's time to go across the SEC, presented by T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC and proud partner of the Florida Gators. At the break, it's Florida 45, Colorado 45. Mike Moe back inside the UFL studios. So far, the SEC not exactly faring too well in this NCAA tournament in the first round. After yesterday's 1-3 and three showing, the only team to make the second round was Tennessee. Everybody else lost, including Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Kentucky. Perhaps the biggest surprise of the night last night as they went down to Oakland in the first round of that game. Things a little bit better today as far as the teams that have started playing so far. Auburn at halftime. They are leading Yale. That game as part of the East Region, 41-34. to It's going on in Spokane, Washington. Figure that out if you can. The winner of this game here, the Gators and Buffaloes, will face Marquette on Sunday. Eagles advancing with an 
69 win over Western Kentucky. Now, also here in the South Region, games taking place in Memphis later on this afternoon or this evening. Texas A&M will take on Nebraska. That's an 8-9 matchup. And a winner of that game will match up with the Houston Longwood winner. Houston, of course, the top seed overall in this NCAA tournament along with Purdue. Now, some other games going on as well. Duke and uh, Vermont will do battle a little bit later on. And Wisconsin will take on James Madison, one of those dangerous 5-12 matchups. We mentioned the East region earlier. Top seed UConn there defeating Stetson. They are the top overall seed in this tournament. They blow out Stetson. Wasn't close. 91-52 was the final in that one. They will meet Northwestern. The Wildcats winning in overtime, knocking out a Final Four participant from last year in FAU. 77-65 to was the final there. Also from the East, San Diego State awaits the winner of Auburn-Yale this evening on Sunday. Aztecs get by UAB, taking the lead late. 69-65 was the final in that one. Jalen Ledee was the big star there. He had 32 points for the Aztecs. Also in the West region now, Clemson blew out New Mexico 77-56, leading wire to wire in that one. So did Baylor as they take care of business beating Colgate 92-67. Later on this evening, it's Alabama and Charleston, and St. Mary's takes on Grand Canyon. To the Midwest now, top seed Purdue in action later on tonight against Grambling. Utah State will meet TCU in the 8-9 matchup there. Also, those are your other games going on this evening out of that particular region. We've reached the half third, uh, second half action, I should say. Almost said third quarter, but second half action coming your way in just a moment. Sean's back to bring you the play-by-play along with Lee. We see what the Gators can do in the second half. Shot the ball really well and played very well in the first half offensively. Can they stop the Buffaloes on the defensive end? We're going to find out here in just a few moments when the second half begins. 45-45, your halftime tally. This is the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles reminds you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's like driving around twice the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. To win while driving, you must focus. Put it down and focus on driving to arrive alive. The passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On SEC Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash SEC Sports. This is Gators Basketball from Learfield. Hey, Gator fans. It's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! Walk-ons is always a win. Whether it's for a post-game celebration, drinks with the crew, or an easy weeknight dinner, we got it covered. Scratch-made dishes, wall-to-wall TVs, craft beers and cocktails. Dig into our mouth-watering menu items like po' boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp. Plus, fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. Find your nearest location or order online or in the app. Walk-on Sports Bistro for the win. Back at the Gamebridge Fieldhouse here in Indianapolis, where at the half, the Gators in Colorado are tied at 45, game one of the NCAA tournament. Now to call the second half of this afternoon's game, here is the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. Thank you, Steve Egan. Both teams back on the floor. We uh, eagerly anticipate the start of this second half. It's been wildly entertaining so far. We're no better than when we started Lee Humphrey, all tied at 45. I don't 
feel the need to ask you about adjustments on the offensive end. It's the defensive end that you and I are concerned about. 61% from the field for Colorado. They've gotten whatever they wanted around the basket. They've only hit three threes. They don't take a ton of threes, but when they shoot them, they make them. But where they're killing us is just at the basket off of drives and post touches. So we've got to We've got to be more disruptive on the defensive end. And you and I kicked around a couple of ideas. One was put some length on them. A Riley Kugel even for a couple of minutes. There are some remedies, right? And I, I just don't see Colorado shooting 61% for the entire game, regardless of what the Gators do, but that's just me. That's right. I don't think they're going to shoot much better. <laughs> they probably are not going to maintain. When they're outshot for the game, they are 1-6 and six on the year. So if we're able to outshoot them from a percentage standpoint in the second half, we probably win the game. But we've got to be more physical down low. We don't have to worry about fouls as much now that we have a half underneath our belt. So we can try to hit Lampkin before he gets to the basket. I wouldn't mind seeing our guards be a bit more aggressive. Let's, let's let, let Riley loose a little bit. Yeah, Riley on the offensive end has eight. He matches... Um, Will Richard for team high honors here through one half of play. First half numbers always brought to you by Vistar Credit Union. Vistar, do good, bank better. Colorado's got that guard in K.J. Simpson. He's not coming out. He plays just about every minute of the game. So it's him and him alone that you've got to kind of, to use the old cliche, cut the head off the snake. We'll see if the Gators can make that adjustment here in the start of the second half. He's their leading scorer, 19 and a half a game. So if we could take him out, that's why... Maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Put Riley on him, tire him out a little bit. Get some aggressiveness on him. You're in a situation, Lee, you and I are kind of giggling about this a little bit. You're in a situation where first meeting ever between these two, look, that wild card adjustment, something that you may have not done all year long, comes into a play when you're looking at the clock, it says 20 minutes. Is it 20 minutes until Sunday, or is it 20 minutes until next season? That's what's on the line right now. Paint numbers big. 24 for Colorado, 18 for Florida. Gators have tied the half with Colorado via the long ball. That's where their advantage has been. Meanwhile, it's Colorado's high percentage of makes from the field, their number of points in the paint. Their big, their big center Lampkin is a load, and that's a tall order without Micah Handlock that we knew it would be coming into this matchup. He's got a ton of weight on him, so if you allow him to get some speed and momentum on a cut, He's going to bury you right under the rim. That's why we've got to meet him early or try to make him work a bit more for that uh, position. Gators have a win streak on the line here in opening round games. They've won eight straight, and here they've made the tournament in the last eight occurrences. They've won and advanced to the round of 32. Gators 45-19 and 19 all time at NCAA tournament play. The 11 Sweet 16s, the 9 Elite 8s, the 5 Final Fours. Colorado's resume not as strong, but both teams vying for a spot on Sunday against second-seeded Marquette, who was in a battle for a good 30 minutes against Western Kentucky and then pulled away and won by double figures. The arrow belongs to Florida. The Gators will begin the second half with the ball and shoot at the end to our right in their home whites as the seven seed. I want to know who has a longer first-round winning streak than we do. Eight seems pretty Eight's, good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Richard, Pullen, Condon, Samuel on the floor with Walter Clayton to begin the half. Same starting five for the Buffaloes with K.J. Simpson up top guarding Zion Pullen. Pass to the right high post for Samuel. Throws over the left side. Richard thought about a three. Rolls it into Condon block left. He's doubled. They'll shovel it to Samuel at the foul line. They'll flick a shot up and score one step into the top of the lane. Set play to get Will Richard a three. He didn't quite have it, so he fed Condon and good post-to-post -post passing. Samuel with eight points and five rebounds now up to the moment. Lampkin comes out to catch above the right elbow. Looks over his left shoulder. Dribbling with a hard pounding of the right hand. Iso for him, right side of the lane against Samuel. He's still away from the paint. Throws corner left to Silva. Or attempting it rather for three, no good. Long rebound tracked down by O'Brien at the top of the floor. Long rebound out to him. Roll it to Hadley. Block right. Spin shoots. Fouled by Pullen. It was Colorado's first offensive rebound for the game. Wow. Now look, when you're shooting 61%, there aren't a whole lot of offensive rebounds to be had, but that is remarkable at 19-12 in the second half. Only nine. Nine chances in the first half for them to get offensive rebound. We cleaned them all up. Javon Hadley at the free throw line to our left, where Colorado's been a frequent visitor, and they've been perfect. Nine for nine as he hits the front end. 
Hadley, a senior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Knocks them both down. Ties it at 70 at 47. So back and forth we go here. As it's been the case after the Gators surrendered a 10-point lead in the first half. Condon takes the ball top of the arc, hands it to Clayton. Clayton turns down the right side of the lane, rises, shoots, and hits a mid-range jumper about 13 feet away. That was tough. He clutched it to let De Silva fly by, then shot the two. All in the air. Nobody's stopping anybody here to begin the half. Second offensive touch for Colorado. Hadley picks it up, hands it to Simpson. Simpson circles the key, goes back wing left. Hadley on the catch, bounces once, feeds Lampkin off the left low post. They're going to try and trap him. Drives uphill, they'll swing, swing to the right wing. Three on the way, O'Brien drops in the fourth three-pointer of the game for Colorado. Tried to send a guard to double on the baseline. Tyrese has got to keep Lampkin on the side there. If he gets middle, then it just destroys the double team. Samuel right down the pipe, lays it up. Contact, no foul. The ball's on him. Oh, there is a foul. They did whistle a foul on to Silva. Silva, the Silva picks up his second, and Tyree Samuels at the line for the first time today. Gators five of six at the line as a team. Man, think about all the free throw attempts Florida had last week at the SEC tournament. First free throw is short. Front iron no good for Samuel. As good as he was at the SEC tournament, the line overall. He ended up shooting 61% in conference play. So that'd be since basically January 1. He splits the free throws here. The Gators trail by two. I beg your pardon, have tied it at 50. Short change the boys. Lampkin catches between the circles. Odd touch for him. Dribble handoff to the Silva. Guarded by Condon as he took it to the right elbow. Picks up the dribble, looks inside, nothing there. Feeds Simpson wing right. Simpson trying to find Lampkin. And on a short roll, he threw a bullet at him. It's off Lampkin. Down the floor, the Gators with the steal. Samuel fouled in the gather. But yet they're going to call the foul on the floor. He had picked it up, gathered to shoot. When the blocking foul occurred, it is on Luke O'Brien. That was going to be an and one chance. The ball just rolled yes. off the rim. But changing up to post defense, Tyree Samuel fronting Lampkin last possession. Throw it into Samuel here, blocked right off the inbound. Pivots, turns over the left shoulder, banking right hook won't go. Lampkin Jr. has the rebound, outlet pass to Simpson. Simpson walks the dribble toward the top of the arc, crossover dribble to the elbow, pocket pass inside, Lampkin catches, lays it in. Took a shot from Samuel in the process. 52-50 Colorado into the paint. Richard slashes the rim and lays it up past two Buffalo defenders. Strong drive from Will. Yeah. New contact. Double figures now for Richard. 52-52. O'Brien crossover dribble through the left wing to the center of the lane. Spins pass deflected but caught block left by Lampkin. Spins off Samuel and Samuel picks up a foul. Three that's three on Tyrese now and that's early in the half. I was hoping he could play a nice stretch without picking up his third. The chatter that you could hear in the background being picked up by Steve Egan's mic underneath the rim to our left. The Gators huddling there. And some frustration, but communication here about how they need to be defensively. Samuel has to come out of the ball game here on his third foul. So Hawk is in. Baseline inbound to Lampkin at the left high post. Pivot 360, trying to hand it off to Simpson. Now rumbles down the lane. Shoots blocked by Condon. Condon had 43 blocks during the year coming into today. Loose ball for Clayton. Through traffic into the lane. Got hacked. Ball's loose. Hawks grabbed it for the Gators. Releases wing right to Richard. They send it out on top to Condon. Looked off pulling. Alex down the left side of the lane. Puts his back to the goal. Bump, bump against Lampkin. Turns. Trying to induce a foul. Right hook. Got it. Oh, he, he nestled it over the front iron. That's balance from Alex because he took a hit from Lampkin. Regathered himself and then went up over it. First career start, Condon's got four points. Gators take the lead, 54-52. Bob it to De Silva, right side of the lane. Looking over his right shoulder, bounce with the left. Square shoots. Short may have been tipped by Richard. Houck with the loose ball. Up the left side to Walter Clayton. Eyes forward, eases to the top of the arc. Goes to Alex Condon. Thought about a three-wing left. They dared him to shoot it. Alex dribbles to the right side of the forehands of Richard. Steps to the free throw line. Shoots. Short for 15. Rebound. Condon. Outside to Richard. Straight away three. Back iron no good. Big opportunity for the Gators there. Couldn't get one to go. Simpson races up the floor. Wiggles down the right side of the lane. Layup. Fouled on the arm. 
Missed the lay-in, but a foul here on Clayton will take us to a timeout. The under-16 has arrived here in the second half. Free throws for Colorado. They haven't missed at the line yet. When we return, Florida tied at the half, leads by two as we break for the first time. 15.50 to go in regulation. 54-52. Florida leads Colorado at the NCAA tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. As the official wealth management team of the Florida Gators, Talon Wealth gives a cheer for the orange and blue when our Gators take a chomp out of the competition. But we react differently. When products like mutual funds, annuities, or even REITs takes a chomp out of someone's retirement, are you receiving the value you're paying for? Compare what Talon's been doing to what you've been doing for free. Visit guardingyournestegg.com. Equities Resurfaces through Talon Private Wealth and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. License D056341. Compensation was paid to Lillian for partnership with the Gators as of January 2023. What makes a champion? Dedication, resilience, preparation, and belief. In the summer of 2024, our U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes will compete in Paris for gold medals and their part in history. But Team USA won't get there alone. At UF Health, we know what it takes to be a champion and to care for champions. We do it every day for them and for you. UF Health is a proud national medical center for Team USA. The same great care they get, you get. Always. Let's get ready for game day, Gator Nation. Tee things up with a smooth, refreshing taste of Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Whether you're tailgating at the swamp or hosting friends at home, keep that cooler filled with Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. With a 5% kick of alcohol, Twisted Tea is easy to drink and tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea. Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Keep it twisted, Gator Nation. Twisted Tea Green Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Alcohol for 21 years and older. Please responsibly. This is the NCAA Tournament. Now back to Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Here's the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. 12 lead changes, 5 ties. It's a 9-7 advantage for the Gators since halftime. Florida leads Colorado 54-52. Free throws a chance to tie coming up for Colorado. They haven't missed a free throw yet. They're 10 for 10. You think they're due. Nonetheless, the Gators... Since halftime have adjusted what, Lee Humphrey? Tried two different things in the post. We tried to go with a post double on Lampkin when he gets the touch at the block, sending a guard along the baseline. But the one time we tried it, Tyrese gets middle. So Lampkin's driving away from the double team, and now he's playing three on one on the backside. Colorado knocks down a three. We try to front Lampkin the next possession. And Colorado, I think we actually got a stop on that possession. We front, Lampkin, the ball doesn't go in. We get a stop, we're able to get out in transition. Those are the two adjustments that I've seen. Samuel now on the bench, though, with three fouls. He has nine points, five rebounds, four assists in the game. So he's been a big part of the story for the Gators. We'll see how they weather without Samuel here for this next stretch, this next segment, as Steve Egan calls it, when we go timeout to timeout. K.J. Simpson at the line to our left. Second in the Pac-12 in scoring this year at 19.6 points per ball game. Simpson with nine points today is now six points shy of becoming the third Colorado Buffalo with 700 in a season. Free throws good. One more to tie. Looks like Simpson can't remember when he took his rest in the first half, but he gets one break a game based on his minutes average. Yep. Sometime at an immediate timeout in the first a half. Average 37 minutes a game. Hits both free throws. The game tied again, 54-54. Now catches top of the arc. Hands it to Denzel Aberdeen. He'll step back to the edge of the center jump circle. Play catch with Poland on the perimeter. Pass to Richard. Just got a pass to Silva. Drives to the cup. Acrobatically to the rim. And scores to the left hand. That was a 3-2 zone from Colorado. I think they watched some conference tape against us. And uh, Will with a nice drive late in the shot clock to attack it from an angle. Javon Hadley got hit in the face and has to come out of the game. He already has a face mask on. Yep, and when Richard came down from making the shot, his left forearm came across the face of Hadley, who's in a great deal of discomfort. Luke O'Brien returns to the floor for Colorado. With the last dead ball, Cody Williams checked in. He's their first five-star recruit since David Harrison. From Tennessee, actually. Over to the 
Silva, wing right three. Good. Tristan De Silva's knocked down two threes now today. Colorado leads by one. Richard can't answer. Wing left three is off the iron. Simpson with a rebound for Colorado. Brings it up the right side of the floor. Lobs it right of the paper to Silva. Iso against Richard. Spins. Drives the lane. Oh, and he missed it point blank. Get a feathery shot with the left hand that wouldn't fall through. What a break for the Gators. They're able to clear it. Florida now out rebounding Colorado 21 to 16. Buffalo still shooting 57% despite the miss. Hawk hands it off to Richard. Top of the arc. Drops it to Condon. Straight away for three. Back iron. Won't go. Rebound to Silva. Silva will bring it up himself. Picked it up like he wanted to shoot a three. Bounce pass into the low post. Lampkin shoots. Blocked by Condon. Lampkin got it back. And goes up the score. Good initial defense. It's unfortunate that block goes right back to Lampkin. So now a three-point lead for the Buffaloes. Riley Cougar waiting to check in for Florida. Pullen comes to the near side with the dribble. He's on the right angle. Draws the Silva on a switch. Picks up the dribble. Feeds Condon to the nail. Shoots a banker too hard. Long rebound out to Pullen, top of the arc. Over to Aberdeen on the left angle. Feed the low post on a bounce pass to Condon. Condon, bump, bump into Lampkin. The freshman spins. He went the other way on him and scores. He spun off his right shoulder. Went the opposite way of what Lampkin thought and banked it in. What a move from Alex. That was quick. Condon with six points. Simpson driving the right slot. Gets up under the rim, and the help defender Condon will foul K.J. Simpson and send Simpson back to the line where he's four for four. So Gators down one. Samuel's going to return with Kugel here between free throws. Javon Hadley's okay. He'll come back on the floor for Colorado. better job against Colorado this half. They're only four for nine, but they do have two threes. Yeah. That's the one thing you chased them off the line in the first half. De Silva with a big one just moments ago to put them up by three. We went under a little flare screen. De Silva hit a pretty deep one. It was a nice shot for De Silva. Condon with that second chance bucket. Hold the Gators within one. One free throw down, one to go with Colorado leading by two. And they're back up by three, 61-58. At some point, they're going to miss at the line. They're 13 of 13 now at the free throw line. Six for six of this half alone. 13-30 to go. Cullen drives down the left side of the lane. Spin throws out on top of the house. High low to Samuel. Samuel in a crowd is whacked on the arm. Looks like O'Brien got him. Nope, the foul will be charged on K.J. Simpson, the guard. And... Colorado going small without Lampkin in there. Maybe we could take advantage of this around the glass. Team foul number three on the bus. Baseline inbound for the Gators. Left of the goal. Pullen throws it in. Sideline left to Samuel. Hand it to Pullen in front of the Gators bench. And a bad pass. Fumbled by Samuel. Grabbed by Simpson who throws it off Samuel to go out of bounds. That's a lazy exchange right in front of Florida's bench. Not a good turnover here for the Gators. See Zion hardly ever make a mistake like that. Now, we're talking about a guy here that what ended up in the up to today 158 assists of 42 turnovers. Each team has turned it over seven times. Hadley dribbles to his left, hands it left foul line. He sent it to O'Brien, drives, turns down the lane, and lays it in past Pullen. His link comes into play there against Z. 63 58. Pullen to the top of the arc, retreats a couple of steps. This is the largest lead of the game for Colorado. Kyle hands it off to Kugel. Kugel angle left. Keeps the dribble alive here against Tristan De Silva. Bounce pass to Samuel. Down the right side of the lane. Pitches out above the three-point lane to Pullen. Pullen to the foul line. To the left side of the lane. Pops a little mid-range jumper up. Missed it. Ball hit the floor and De Silva's got it for Colorado. Some slippage now by the Gators. O'Brien catches wing right. Drives through to... Clean run of the rim, layup good, timeout, Todd Golden. Be a full timeout, and the largest lead of the day now for Colorado at seven points. Tyrese, he looked tired on that closeout. I mean, Brian just going right by him. No, no need to cl close out that fast. And Tyrese almost gave up his fourth foul there, being lazy. He did make contact. They put the whistle in the pocket and let him go for the bucket. And with that, with 12.25 to go in the second half, 
10th seed of Colorado, 65. 7th seed, Florida, 58. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Lease a new 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for $329 a month for 36 months. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Well-qualified lessees with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3628 to its signing. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career path with flexibility and great pay and benefits? Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. This is the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Today we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor. And it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Hey Gator fans, it's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! Plus eight points, the free throw line, and plus seven on the scoreboard now. The largest lead for the Colorado Buffaloes here in the South Region first round. Colorado 65, Florida 58, 12.25 to go. Colorado getting whatever they want on the offensive end. Now 55% in the half, six for 11, 59% for the game, and two for three from the three-point line. I mean, they are just putting on a clinic offensively. We can't get stops and get out and run. We're going to have to figure out we're going to stay in this game. We've got to figure out how to get some stops. 6-0 run working for Colorado. If you go back to the last time out, it's a 13-4 run for the Buffaloes. And the Gators will have the ball out of the timeout. Samuel back on the floor. Aberdeen, Condon, Clayton, Kugel otherwise. Five and double figures now for Colorado. One and double figures for the Gators. That's Richards, 12. Aberdeen takes the dribble to the left timeline. Gives to Samuel between the circles. Dribble handoff to Clayton. Trying to turn the corner. Couldn't do so against De Silva. Now to Condon, top of the key. Steps to the foul line. High low to Samuel. Samuel dribbles once to back up in front of the rim and scores a bunny. Nice set play to get to the high low pass. A lot of action to develop. 65-60. We're under 12 minutes left in the second half. De Silva. Takes a handoff, squares and hits a deep straightaway three. He's hot. Third three-pointer for Tristan De Silva. That was from the edge of the Mar March Madness yeah. logo. 68-60, largest lead for Colorado. High screen and roll. Clayton keeps, goes down the lane, lays it up and in and drew a foul. He can answer the old-fashioned way here. The Gators need a free throw made to answer that De Silva three. And sure enough, it's De Silva who commits the foul. And that'll take us to the under 12 media timeout. Free throw coming up for the Gators. We've cut it to six. Colorado 68, Florida 62. With 11.34 to go in the second half. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gators Sports Network from Learfield. Gator Nation, brace yourselves for the most refreshing game changer since the Gator Chomp. Shock Top Belgian White. At 5.2% ABV, this Belgian wheat ale hits all three points of refreshment, bursting with a tidal wave of citrus fruit for an alley of flavor your taste buds will enjoy. Smoother than a step-back shimmy, Shock Top has been scoring buzzer beaters since 2006. Now flowing in the O-Dome. Please drink responsibly. 
Swish! Wawa is here for game day with hoagies, snacks, drinks, and more for you and the entire squad. Order at wawacatering.com, choose pickup or delivery, and get it in time for the big game. Or if you're feeling hungry right now, just open up the Wawa app and order. Choose in-store or curbside pickup, or get it delivered right to your door. Download the Wawa app today. Wawa is a proud partner of Gators Basketball. If an insurance company is there to sell you insurance, shouldn't it also be there to service it with real people? At Florida Farm Bureau Insurance, we're here to help. We're focused on your specific needs. That's why we have local agents working for you in every county across the state, offering competitive rates and fast, friendly service. It's more than insurance. It's the kind of treatment you deserve. Find a local agent at ffbic.com to set up your free no-obligation insurance review. Farm Bureau Insurance. Helping you is what we do best. Proud to support Gators Athletics. This is the NCAA Tournament. Now back to Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Here's the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. It's great to be a Florida Gator who scores big by saving lives. You have the power to give others a second chance in life by donating blood with One Blood, the official blood center sponsor of the Florida Gators. Visit oneblood.org to find a big red bus blood drive near you. The winner... Faces second-seeded Marquette on Sunday here in Indianapolis. We are 11.34 to go in the second half. Florida's pulled back within six and have a free-throw opportunity coming out of this break. It's Colorado 68, Florida 62. If we can cut it to five right here, Sean, I mean, kind of have to feel good about where we're at. Colorado, they played pretty much the perfect game if you look at their numbers. 60% from the field, 67% from three with six makes. 100% from the line, 14 of 14. And think of those numbers, kind of amazing. We'll be only down five. You're right about that. 20 assists on 24 made field goals for Colorado. They average about 16 assists per game. Gators are right there. All the Gator numbers look healthy, too, offensively. 51%, six threes themselves, win an offensive rebounding glass. Bench is plus 10 for Florida. There is one difference here. Colorado plus eight, free throws made, now plus seven as Walter Clayton Jr. knocks down the free throw, an old-fashioned three-point play. Clayton now with a dozen points, five-point game. Sips it over a double drag up top, dribbles to the right wing, hits inside for Lampkin, fumbled it. He goes to the deck, and he's held up by Condon, a held ball. And the arrow belongs to Colorado. He's lucky he didn't call it for traveling. Gave him a timeout? No way. No way. So they burn a timeout. They keep the arrow as a result and have the ball, which they would have had on the arrow as so he's well. he's calling timeout why Alex has the ball. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with the awarding of the timeout. So Colorado is averaging 1.39 points per possession right now. It's just I want to flip over to our to, to see what I mean. We have we have played well offensively as well, and we are at 1.26. It's number a number you would normally take in any game. Yes. Born in an NBA arena, home of the Pacers, those are NBA-like point possession numbers. All right, out of the timeout, baseline inbound here for Colorado. Right of the goal, it's Simpson on the trigger. And he has to call another timeout. They didn't get the timeout and said it's a five-second call, a turnover. Uh, karma comes to mind. All right. So they burn a 30-second timeout, and then commit the turnover. The Gators have to take advantage. Five-point lead for Colorado. Clayton around the high middle screen to the left. Sets up Kugel between the circles. Riley off the dribble, shoots for three. Oh, it skipped off the iron. No good. Condon with the rebound, and he's fouled multiple ways. So it's going to be team foul number four on Colorado. Maybe five. Five. Fifteen foul on the Buffs. I feel like even though there's been no points scored on the last kind of two plays, some momentum swinging back our way. Yes. It's a gentle swing. Baseline left inbound. Clayton lobs it into Condon. Left foul line extended. Chest pass to the right wing caught by Aberdeen. Denzel directing traffic to the right hand. Yet to use the dribble. 
Just past the con and top of the yard. You want to go high low, nothing there. Back to Aberdeen, one dribble, shoots for three, back iron no good. Rebound, spiked by O'Brien, grabbed by Simpson for the Buffaloes. Simpson drives to the right elbow, slowed up by Clayton, goes wing left for, or wing right rather for Williams. Back to the top of the floor, Luke O'Brien dribbles to his left, puts his back to the goal, throws off the edge of the lane to the right wing. Simpson drives, floater, banked it in. Big shot for K.J. Simpson. 70-63. to Alex backed away, playing for the rebound, and opened up the floater opportunity. Samuel catches a little post up here, left side of the lane. Leaves for a weak side, cutting. Riley Kugel, oh, he missed a layup off the catch. Missed it point blank, left to the rim. Chest pass to Hadley. Drives going to the cup, and fouled by Kugel, who fell down. That's why they had the advantage going down the lane. Kugel trying to catch up and caught some of the shooter while trying to reject the shot. Riley made, I don't think that's a foul. No, it's not. That's a nice block for Riley. That's all ball, nobody. There's some booing going on from the orange and blue that just saw it on the big screen here above the floor. It was such an aggressive block. It looks like a foul to the official, but that was a nice play. First free throw good. Colorado is 15 for 15 from the free throw line. And their lead grows to eight again at 71-63. Are they going to miss? Yes, first missed free throw. So this matches the largest lead Colorado's had in this half. Samuel plays catch with Con at the top of the yard. Dribble hand off to Clayton, turns, fires, and buries the straightaway three. Monster make by Clayton. 71-66 Colorado. That's the first three-pointer of the second half for the Gators. Williams tried to drive for the right wing. Bump into Clayton. Spins. Oh, and they're going to let him score, and they call a blocking foul on Clayton. I can't believe it. Here's a look at the replay. Todd Golden is infuriated on the far sideline. Pacing, sprinting up and down the sidelines. He's looking for something to break. And Williams at the line to our left for a three-point play. Missed a free throw. They've missed two in a row. Let's answer with the bucket here, guys. 73-66 Colorado. Samuel catches between the circles, hands it off to Richard. Will in the pink sneakers. Gives to Condon at the top of the key. Steps to the free throw line. Leading 15-footer, no good. Rebound, punch loose. First to the floor, Condon. Squirts out to Hadley, though. Outlet pass to Simpson. Simpson peels off the foul line. Waits for some friends. The feed Lampkin. Posting up Condon. Turns and hits a right hook off the glass to score. And the Gators are down nine. Their largest deficit now. And we are sitting at 9.05 to go on the game clock. Gators have five comeback wins this year, went down by eight or more points. Pullen spins, throws out the foul line to Richard. Richard big quiets is nearly going. Feed the low post on a bounce pass to Samuel. Just off the right block. Throws out of a double. Richard for three. Rinsed it. Will Richard buries the three. And a timeout called here. A 30 by the Gators. We'll keep it right here with 8.43 to go. But Will Richard, who had been quiet here in the second half, comes up with his third three-pointer of the game. Give him 15 points, and the Gators again trail by six at 75 to 69. Coach Golden still talking to the official. I think it's a good timeout from Coach. Settle the guys a little bit. Colorado has been on a run, and we have a nice play to answer Will Richard three. But the last possession, the ball was loose in the paint, and we were just too slow to get there. I, I think Coach has got to probably telling his guys like hey this is winning time right now if you're not first to every loose ball you're not winning this game he's the, the guys need to just step up the intensity a little bit not just lose this game end your season 843 away from either a visit to this building on Sunday and a meeting with Marquette or it's all done two possession games 75-69 Six fouls for the Gators, five for Colorado. 
Gators have one time out of their disposal. Colorado has two. Buffalo's ball linked to the floor to go. Williams will bring it up. Pauses front court right. Takes the dribble up. Feeds Hadley. Dribble handoff wing left to Simpson. Turn through the key. Refeeds Hadley wing left. Bounce it left low. Post safe for going out of bounds by Lampkin. To Hadley with 12 to shoot. Crossover dribble. Lays it up and in on a drive to the rim. Almost Javon forced Hadley. the turnover. Almost. 77-69. Condon hands it off to Kugel on the left angle. Riley tees up a three. Bottom. Kugel buries it. He's in double figures. 11 for Riley Kugel. Five point lead again for the Buffalo. 77 72. Hadley dribbles over the top of the arc. Pitches wing right for Simpson. Over the drag screen by Lampkin. Snap pass back wing right to Hadley. Trying to feed. Lampkin does so well off the right side of the lane. Pump fake. Dribbles to the right side of the goal. To the left side of the goal and a reverse layup is good. Just absolutely muscled his way into a reverse lay-in. There's a did they foul. call a foul as well? They sure did. What in the world? Everybody had gone to the other end of the floor when the whistle was blown. And Todd Golden, already upset with his officiating crew, is now laying into Eric Curry. Technical foul on Golden. That, so, is, a, that is a strange play right there. Yeah, it is. It's going to take us to the under eight timeout. There'll be a free throw for Lampkin and then a technical free throw for Colorado when we come back. 7.43 to go in the second half. Buffalo 79, Gators 72. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gators Sports Network from Learfield. Today we have two very special guests on our program introducing Lemon hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. This is the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Gator fans. It's head men's basketball coach Todd Golden on behalf of ViStar Credit Union. Did you know ViStar offers Florida fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees? ViStar's team is dedicated to making communities they serve stronger by volunteering their time and talents. ViStar also donates millions to local nonprofits. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Visit ViStarCU.org for more information. Go Gators! Hey, it's Sean Kelly. Our Gators don't compromise on the court, and Gator fans don't have to compromise when it comes to diamonds, engagement rings, and fine jewelry. You always get more at International Diamond Center. IDC is Florida's leading jeweler, recognized statewide for excellence in every category. Selection, value, and trust. That's why IDC has been named official jeweler of the Florida Gators again this year. Get details and showroom locations at shopidc.com. International Diamond Center, where Gators Nation shops for jewelry. We we're heading for the break. He is red hot about two particular calls here. Most of the latest here is a foul on Lampkins move to the bucket. That it's hard to say whether or not Khan had fouled him. The problem, though, that didn't help the officials' credibility it was that everybody had gone to the other end of the floor after Lampkin had hit the reverse, and then the whistle indicating the foul. I think if he calls the foul kind of in normal timing, coach doesn't get the technical foul. But it's just so delayed. <laughs> it was, I've hardly ever seen that before. All right. So you're going to get a free throw here from Lampkin to complete the three-point play. Hadley, though, will shoot the technical free throw first. It's 79-72. Colorado leads it with 7.44 to go. We're trying to come back in this game. We've made three of our last four, but... Colorado has made their last nine field goal attempts, and we have one kill. That's three stops in a row this entire game. Goal is typically six, and that came at the 14-minute mark in the first half. Wow. Hadley knocks down 
both of the technical free throws. Now Lampkin will go to the line. So this could become a five-point trip for Colorado. Lampkin's a 64% free throw shooter. This is his first trip to the free throw line. Colorado 17 of 19 overall at the line for the game. And man, what a massive swing. Five-point trip, now a 10-point lead. Largest of the day for Colorado with 7.42 to go. Pullen races down the right slot, turns, shoots, scores in one. That's maybe a make-good call right there. That was Charmin-like. Gators will take the foul here, charge to K.J. Simpson, and Zion Pullen will go to the line. That's three on Simpson in the game. Simpson, De Silva, both with three. Love to see him pick up their fourth. Yeah. Let's go right back at Simpson, next possession. Pullen's free throw is good. Nine points for Zion Pullen. 82 to 75, 735 to go. Simpson brings it across and lobs it to Lampkin, top of the arc. Throws on a backdoor cut. Simpson catches, scores, and reverse, and is fouled by Pullen. He gave it up, a lob pass to the big, and then circled the left wing and cut backdoor. It's a play that we run. We've seen this a lot this year from different teams, and what a nice pass from Lampkin. Tyrese had decent pressure on the ball, but that hurts. That points per possession number you're referring to is only going up right now. And the Gators have committed their ninth foul of the game. Trail by 10 again, 85-75. Pauk picks it up, left foul line extended. Dangerous handoff, grabbed by Pullen. Pullen runs to the rim, runner no good. Stick back opportunity, but Hauk missed too hard off the glass, and he got fouled by Simpson, and that's four fouls on K.J. Simpson. There we go. Let's... He's telling Coach, keep me in the game. Well, let's see if they do. I mean, I don't think they can afford to lose wow. Simpson. That was 7-10 to go. Tad Boyle now is upset with the officiating crew. And two of those officials have gone to the table now. Checking with the alternate official. And this play may be under... Re no, they're changing out a whistle here. A new whistle for Curry, the... Eric Curry, the official that teed up Todd Golden. That points per possession number is 1.44. Pullen's free throw is good. He gets a two-shot opportunity here. Simpson to the bench with four fouls. The freshman Cody Williams back in to run point. Pullen into double figures. The Gators now have five in double figures. That was a key ingredient in their wins of the SEC tournament. So 85-77 with just over seven minutes to go. Williams on the handle here. Harassed by Pullen at the top of the key. Flips it out to Hadley. Javon Hadley's between the circles. Here comes Lampkin to screen. Hadley draws Hauk on the switch. And a foul is called on Hauk. A blocking foul on Hauk, and it's going to be double bonus for the Buffaloes. Sends one of their best free throw shooters to the line. Good initial defense for Thomas, but it was the second drive from Hadley that caught him. So Javon Hadley with 15 points, 8 of 9 at the free throw line, making 9 of 10. Hadley just averaging 6.5 points per game in his last four. Missed the second free throw, rebounded by Riley Kugel for Florida. 86-77, 6.45 to go. Give to Hauk, top of the arc, takes the dribble hand off to Kugel. Picked up his dribble and has to go to Samuel at the top of the arc. Hand off to Richard, dribbles to the foul line, back it out to Kugel. Kugel, angle right, chest pass to Hauk, top of the arc. Down to his left to pull it. Drives to his right. Crossover dribble. Spins down the lane. Hangs in the air. Missed it point blank. Rebounded by Colorado. Kind of shot it on his way down. Hadley crossover dribble. Hands it off to O'Brien. Takes the dribble to the top of the arc. Sends it to his left to De Silva. Lob left block for Lampkin. 
Lampkin bounced once, lost the dribble, throws a dangerous skip pass way right. Williams tried from there, banked in a layup. Largest lead for Colorado at 11, 88-77. Under six minutes to play. Houck hands it off to Richard. And the Gators are into some kind of like have-to-be-perfect territory the rest of the way. Google, crossover dribble. Steps off the left elbow. Shoots, missed a 15-footer. Rebounded by Williams. Williams awkwardly dribbles up the floor. Gets out of it front court left. He says, I was pushed. We also traveled too, but that's no big deal. Lob deep to Lampkin, block right. Shot rejected by Samuel. Back in the hands of Lampkin. Lampkin double now. Strip. Oh, they're going to call a foul. He just got this kind of shocked feel about yep. us right now. We, there's not much time at all left to turn this around. No. Third foul on Thomas Houck. Two more free throws for Colorado. They've attempted 23 already today. And lead by 11, 88-77. The Gators are 2-7 and seven this year when trailing with five minutes to play. 5.23 on the clock. Lampkin's first free throw is good to make it 89-77. Kugel and Samuel go out. Clayton returns with Richard. We need, a, we need a three right here, Sean. Condon, beg your pardon. We need stops. Stops, yeah. Both free throws good. Lampkin with 18 points on 8 of 13 shooting. He's 3 of 3 at the line. Poland attacks the left wing. Slicing the rim. Lays it up and in. So 90 to 79, Colorado on top. When they've gone 90 or more points, Colorado has not lost this year. They're 9-0. Hadley drives to the right wing. Draws a double as he approaches the lane. Pitch it out to Lampkin above the right high post. Back pass to De Silva. De Silva hands it off to Hadley. Works the dribble between the rings. Sends it wing right to Williams. There's a whistle on the baseline. And Condon's going to get called for a foul for contact to Lampkin Jr., Lampkin Jr. walks all the way across half court, laughs at the Gators bench, now walks to the free throw line. That's four fouls on Alex Condon. And that was away from the play. I couldn't see what happened down low there. But. Yeah. Lampkin trying to slow his heart rate. Couple big deep breaths. Shoots and willed a free throw to go in. It's 91 to 79. Without the size of Micah Hanlock, then there has been an effect. Eight for 13 from the field for Lampkin. It's been four for four from the line. And the Gators are held to 34 points now in the half. Colorado's made 11 of their last 12 shots and is 24 of 27 at the free throw line. He also has five assists, and he was averaging about one assist one. with two turnovers coming into this game. Clayton walks the dribble, now speeds up to the right elbow, comes down the right side of the lane, shoots into contact, and draws a foul. So Clayton go to the free throw line, and one thing you can do here is maybe score some points with the clock stopped. Free throw opportunities would be huge. That's the second foul only on Eddie Lampkin. Clayton with 15 points. You're right. We've got to figure out a way to get some stops, Sean. I mean, there's no way for us to get back into this game unless we can get stops. Walter Clayton's first free throw is good. What a year for Walter Clayton, the transfer from Iona. He's sitting right now sixth all-time single-season total points for the Florida Gators. Ninth in three-pointers made. Had 90 coming into today's game. He's got two today. Two free throws good. So it's 92 to 81 with 4.35 to play. De Silva races across half court. Houck's on his hip. De Silva's going to the rim, and he dunked it with the left hand. Nobody stopped him from getting to the rim. Nobody stopped the ball. Up the floor, left sideline for Clayton. Clayton crossover dribble. Inside to Houck, and fouled, and they count the bucket. At first he called it on the floor and then let him finish, and then the official changed his mind. They're going to count the bucket and put Houck on the line. And now the same guy who teed up Todd Golden is turning and warning Tad Boyle. Ty 
Thomas Hawk at the line for the first time tonight. Colorado coach, I mean, with this lead, you can't get a technical foul now. We tried, to, good. we tried to pick up the Silva full court last time. He went right by Thomas, and that's what created all that space for the dunk. Full court pressure by the Gators. Four fouls on De Silva now. De Silva just gets across half court. Lobs it over the top to the right side in the right front court to Hadley. Refeeds De Silva, who's kind of running point forward here with Simpson on the bench with four fouls. 3.58 to go. Nine on the shot clock. De Silva from the right wing. Lobs inside to Lampkin. Deflected out of bounds off Condon. And that'll take us to the under four timeout. Six on the shot clock for Colorado when we come back. The Gators are down 10, and we'll have to mount a huge comeback here to advance to Sunday in the round of 32. 3.53 to play. We take a break. Colorado 94, Florida 84. This is the NCAA tournament on the Gator Sports Network from Learfield. Gator Nation, this season it's time to act for the greener good. UF and GFL are making great strides to reduce our footprint, and you can help. Recyclable and compostable paper products, cups, straws, and food waste receptacles are available at the stadium. Look for the signs and put it in the right can, greener Gator fan. Think green as you cheer on the orange and blue. Call GFL at 1-800-535-9533 or visit us at gflenv.com. GFL, green for life. Hey Gators fans, this is Coach Todd Golden of the Florida Gators. It takes hard work and dedication for Florida's dairy farmers to produce more than 300 million gallons of milk each year. Visit floridamilk.com backslash gators to see how farmers and cows work as a team at the farm just like we do on the court and to learn more about how nutritious milk gets from the farm to your table. Florida Milk, fueling gators since 1985. Retirement is the pursuit of a lifetime at Oak Hammock at the University of Florida. Located in the heart of Gator Country, Oak Hammock is ideal for enjoying nature. Discover new interests with courses at our Institute for Learning in Retirement. Gather with friends to cheer on the Gators and celebrate life. Oak Hammock's newly renovated homes deliver comfort and convenience, including options for skilled nursing and rehab on site. Find your place at oakhammock.org. This is the NCAA Tournament. Now back to Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Here's the voice of the Gators, Sean Kelly. 94-84. Colorado leads by 10 with 3.53 to go. Now the Buffaloes will be inbounding on their offensive end with six on the shot clock. Partner, I've done a lot of basketball games. I don't know if I've ever done the play-by-play -play of a game where a team shot 65% from the field. 67% from three-point and 89% at the free-throw line. That's what Colorado's done today. They've played the perfect game. I mean, they've put on an offensive clinic, have a 10-point lead, and when you look at our numbers, you're thinking, well, there's no way we lose this game shooting 51% from the field, 45% from three, and that's with nine makes, which is above our average, and 87 from the free-throw line at 13 for 15. I mean, our offensive numbers have been fantastic, but yet we're down 10. Just can't get a stop, or that's just a red hot team. I mean, I don't know if there's blame on Florida, or you just ran into the hottest team in the country. And they got hot tonight. They they played three or four consecutive games where they played well below their average. I mean, they only scored about 60 points against Boise State in the playing game Wednesday night. Um, I'm sure we could have executed better on the defensive end, and there's things that we can go back and say, hey, we should have done this, but when they did that, but still. They played red hot. They have hit 12 of their last 13 shots in the second half alone. They're 15 of 21. And they put the ball into play, and now they had to wait for television. Now they hand it to Simpson, who's returned with his four fouls. Goes to Dindo O'Brien, left of the goal. Can't get a shot away against Clayton. Feed Lampkin, top of the key. He's harassed into a bad shot. Missed an 18-foot jumper and an offensive foul called against O'Brien. A push off, and it'll be one and one for the Gators at the other end. Down 10 with 3.46 to go. That's four now on O'Brien. It's about the best play we could happen. A foul on a rebound, so yes. there's no time that goes off the clock. And we send Walter, our best free throw shooter, to the line. Clayton is three for three today. Raises shoots. 
That's 37 straight made free throws for Walter Clayton Jr. Played with 18 points to lead the Gators in scoring. Got them both. Eight point game with 3.46 to go. Full court pressure by the Gators. Into Simpson. Gets through it with a pass ahead to De Silva. De Silva takes the dribble all the way to the left wing. Silva walks above the three point line with the right hand dribble. Tried to feed Lampkin and turned it over. He threw it toward the left corner. And Colorado now all of a sudden. Still a game, eight points. Tight. Yes. 3.34 to go. The orange and blue fans behind the bench in the corner, rising their feet. Cohen drives the paint, throws out to Hauk, who turned it over right back to Colorado. Three on to the other end, and intercepting a pass in the paint is Poland. Sion speeds up down the other end, gives the Clayton wing left. Clayton retreats, shoots a deep left wing three, skips off the rim, no good. Richard taps the rebound, but it's right to O'Brien for Colorado. What a chance yes. he had there. 3.07 to go. No fouls to give on either side. Gators have a timeout at their disposal. Colorado has two. 2.58 to play. De Silva catches front court left. Looking to trap. De Silva takes the dribble toward the center of the floor. One on one now against Thomas Howe. Eight to shoot for De Silva. De Silva fumbled it between his legs, keeps the dribble alive, picks it up, throws to Simpson up top, contested three. Air ball left side. Lampkin rebound, shoots, and they're going to wave it off. The ball went through, but the officiating crew says too late. Shot clock violation. They will take a look. I don't think that no, was good. No, they're not going to. It was in his hands. Yes, in his hands, and that's three consecutive stops, shot. So the Gators have forced 16 shot clock violations now this year. Still an eight-point game, though, for Colorado. Owen picks it up, angle left, hands it to Richard. No feet, Clayton coming off the far sideline. Clayton on the dribble, out toward the center jump circle. Works all around a screen by Condon. Attacks Lampkin and a blocking foul on the drive and dish. Free throws for the Gators. Chance to score with the clock stopped at 219. Nice drive from Walter into the Lampkins. Into his leg there on the drive. So three stops in a row, and that was we couldn't capitalize on it, but we gave ourselves a chance there. Third foul on Lampkin Jr. Walter Clayton back to the free throw line. First one's good. He's got 20 points. The Gators have a 20-point score for the 37th time this season. That's the most since the mid-90s. And by the way, Clayton's been a guy that's done it a lot. 15 times this year he's gone for 20 or more. He's got one more free throw to go. Trying to make this a six-point game. He did. 94 to 88. 219 to go. Full court pressure again by the Gators. Into Simpson. Simpson to the inbounder, O'Brien. Dribbles through two, kicks ahead to Williams. Williams to the Silva wing right, lob for the rim, and Condon fouls Williams, trying for the lob at the rim. And that was a great contest from Alex. Is that his fifth it's foul? His fifth. Let's see a replay of that foul. I thought he got up there cleanly. And he's got he it with the body. It's a foul. Oh, he did? Okay. I mean, he got the ball, but... I think it's foul. Condon here in his first career start. Taking the place of Micah Hanlockton. Fouls out. 29 minutes. Six points. Seven rebounds. Career high. Six assists for Alex Condon. Alex stepped up and... I mean, there's nothing to complain about on the offensive end. I'm sure he would have liked to give Lampkin a bit more trouble down low, but he played a nice game. So Cody Williams, the freshman, the five-star recruit at the free throw line for Colorado, leading by six. Knocks down the first free throw. Everything they throw at the rim seems to go in. 25 of 28 now at the line. Cody Williams, who averages 12 a game, is sitting on seven points, three or four at the line, one more coming. So on the floor for the Gators now, Richard, Clayton, Hauk, Samuel, and Poland. Ryland Kugel's checked in, beg your pardon. He takes the place of Thomas Hauk. Both free throws good, 96-88, 2.09 to play. 
Clayton crossover dribble. Drives the right side of the lane. Lays it up and in. He beat Hadley on it. They didn't want to send him into the line. Full court pressure. Hadley gets it into De Silva. In the backcourt with 26 on the shot clock. Hadley to half court. Just got it through to De Silva front court right. Almost the count. Release the pass to Williams. They really spread the floor now. 143 to play. They're going to play keep away from the Gators as long as they can. Nine to shoot. Simpson now holding in the left front court. Takes the dribble top of the arc. Puts his head down. Works left side of the lane. Twisting shot. No good. Right into the lap of the Silva. New shot clock for Colorado. And Poland fouls Simpson on the catcher above the foul line near side. And they forced a tough shot for Simpson. Just couldn't clean it up. We get that, that rebound. We come down, knock down a three. It's a one possession game. 96 90, Colorado. But two free throws for Simpson, who hasn't missed. He's seven for seven at the line. Raises, shoots, hits. 97 90 with 126 to play. Got to do what Walter did on the last possession. Just quick attack to the basket. Don't waste any time. One free throw to go for K.J. Simpson. That one popped out. It rattled out. Rebound Samuel. Give to Clayton. Half jog across half court. Clayton to the top of the yard. Puts his head down. Drives into O'Brien. Shoots. Got it and one. O'Brien's going to foul out with 1.16 to go. And Walter Clayton Jr., his chest heaving right now, will go the line for a possible three-point play. What a drive from Walter. I mean, creative dribble to get past O'Brien, then a through contact, double clutch. Five-point game. Clayton can make this a four-point game with 1.16 to go. You can just I think, make this four-point game. You just play normal defense right here, try to get a stop. 97-92 at the moment. Clayton raises, shoots. Got it. 97-93. Full court press again for the Gators. Thomas Houck has come in to replace Richard here on the defensive end. To Silva, running the baseline. Shuffling to his left, throws it into Williams. Bounce pass back to the Silva, throws to Simpson. He's got a clear lane to get across half court. Pauses, keeps the dribble alive, right front court. Throws to Williams, elbow right. Spins into Kugel, almost lost him. Passes out through Hadley to Simpson, front court right. They're looking to trap. Simpson in front of his own bench. Whips it out to the Silva near half court. Eight to shoot, under a minute to play. Pass to rough in top of the arc. He'll toss it to Simpson. Drives diagonally across the lane right to left and scores a lay-in. And the drought ends for Colorado. They went three and a half minutes without a field goal. 45 seconds left. Leaning three. Clayton rims off. Rebound Kugel. Give the pull on top of the arc. Back to the left wing. Clayton for another three. Bang! He got it! Right in front of his own bench. Timeout Florida. It's a three-point game with 37.2 seconds to go. 99-96, we'll keep it right here. Walter Clayton, Sean, wow. How big has he been? Clutch play after clutch play these last five minutes. 29 points for Walter Clayton Jr. 9 of 15 from the field, 8 of 8 at the line, and that was his third three-pointer of the game. So now it's a 37-second contest. The shot clock in play for Colorado. Walter has made our last three field goals with four free throws mixed in there. It's a new Gator and season high for Walter Clayton, 29 points. His career high is 30. That was against Niagara back on February the 12th of 23 while with Iona. So, partner, you don't have a foul to give here. The arrow still belongs to Colorado, and it goes all the way back to the timeout that was granted when it should have been a held ball earlier in this half. It would be nice to have that arrow. And I mean, We've stayed with the press, and we haven't been able to turn Colorado over except for one time when we first went to it. So I'm curious to see if we stay in that or if we just drop back, try to get a stop, because it's only a one-possession game right now. You've used your last timeout. This is the last timeout available to Todd Golden and the Gators. So I think you think... You might force Colorado into one, but you almost have to draw up these last three possessions, perhaps, right here and now. 
And it looks like Coach is drawing something on the board. I would be surprised if he hadn't called a play already. Clayton Kugel, Samuel Pullen, and Hauk on the floor for the Gators on the timeout. They will press. 37.2 to go. 99-96 Colorado. Who led by as many as 13 here in the half. To Silva on the trigger once again. Chest pass in to Ruffin. Ruffin trapped, throws out of it, intercepted by Kugel. Kugel pauses, holds the ball, bounce pass to Pullen, top of the floor. Drives it to the left wing, back it out to Clayton. Clayton from the left angle, attacks the rim, he's fouled on a miss. He's going to the line to shoot two free throws with 22.6 seconds to go. Fouls number four on De Silva. Double bonus here for Walter Clayton Jr. Extend that game, attack the basket. You want to stretch this game out. Walter doing a great job not settling for the three, going to the rim, drawing the foul. Two massive free throws now. The first one's good for Walter Clayton. The Gators down two, 99-97. Florida's made five of their last seven shots. The turnovers by Colorado, crucial here down the stretch. Second free throw, he missed it. 22 seconds left. Shot clock is off. Hauk trying to foul, no. They send it up to Williams. They have to foul now. Hauk reaches in and fouls Cody Williams. And we'll send Williams, the freshman, to the free throw line. 99-97 Colorado with 14.7 seconds remaining. And that, that missed free throw hurts. Walter has been perfect down the stretch. 38 or 39 straight made free throws before that miss. Yep. And we're still in it here. Williams has to hit these free throws. Even if he does, attack the basket quick. Get it to the press. Really needed to miss one here. First free throw. Missed it. At worst, the Gators will be down three, but without a timeout. 14.7 to go. Colorado does have two timeouts at their disposal. Cody Williams back to the line. 99-97. Free throw, good. Three-point lead for Colorado. They will sub in the 6'11 freshman, Bengat Dak. Full court pressure by the Buffaloes. They'll sink back. Clayton brings it up. A three to tie and send it overtime. Deep straightaway three. Bang! Wow, wow, wow. Walter Clayton with a pull up from the logo. Ties the game at 100. Inbound to Simpson. Eight seconds left. Simpson advances past half court and calls for a timeout. Walter Clayton Jr., a new career high 33 points, has tied the game. Unbelievable, Sean. He just walked across half court. One dribble. Not going to guard me. I'm just going to take it. Walter Clayton, unbelievable down the stretch. He was five feet behind the three-point line. Maybe six. Second 30-point game in NCAA history for Florida. 100 to 100 in regulation. What a game, Sean. What an unbelievable game. 6.1 on the clock. You have to defend without fouling here. You can't put Colorado on the line to win it. And Tad Boyle is drawing up a play in the timeout huddle at the end of our left. Todd Golden's inside the huddle with the Gators at our right. You'd love to disrupt the entry pass here. Make it hard for them to get into the set play that they want to run because once they've been able to get into a set play, I mean, we haven't stopped them all night, Sean, so we got to get one here. Inside the huddle brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. 6.1 left. Can the Gators force overtime here? It would be their fifth game in overtime this year. The round of 32 on the line. Condon has fouled out. Three Gators with four fouls. Hout, Pullen, and Clayton all have four. O'Brien has fouled out for Colorado. Cody Williams, the freshman, is on the trigger. Front court right. Williams looking, looking. In it goes to Simpson. Baseline right jumper for two. In and out and in. 
1.7 to go. Colorado leads by two. Samuel into Clayton. Pass half court for the rim and the win. It's wide right. And what a shot from Simpson. I mean, that was great defense. You forced Simpson into a contested 17-footer on the baseline over two defenders. And the ball rattles around the rim up and back down. 102-100, the final. Colorado, the 10th seed, eliminates Florida and advances to play Marquette on Sunday. It hit the rim four times before going in for K.J. Simpson, who threw a forearm into the chin of Pullen to get the shot away. A baseline right jumper and a winner for K.J. Simpson. And Colorado survives and advances. I mean, what a game, Sean. <laughs> That's one of the best offensive games I think I've ever watched. When you combine the performance of both teams, I mean, just phenomenal on the offensive end. We made stops the last four minutes to keep us in the game, and Walter Clayton just carried us offensively there down the stretch. He was phenomenal, absolutely fantastic, and what a heartbreaking way to go out. You're not kidding. 33 points, a new career high for Walter Clayton Jr., he let the final shot of the game go back in the backcourt. Not even it was more than